I got into some voice acting work where I, I worked for a cult here in Japan. When you hear their voices, you have to imbue that in English. Voice. I had to feel nine different voices. <laughs> so I went yeah. full Dynasty Warriors like three with it. I was like, the heavens have spoken. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Trash Taste Podcast. I'm Joey and I'm with the boys as per usual. And with me, I have a guest. Introduce yourself. <laughs> My name is Peter and I am a former English teacher after 10 years of suffering for my trade. <laughs> and I'm here to educate you guys on my final lesson about what it's like. <laughs> the final lesson. This is this, it. This, this, is is the final lesson. this is it. My <laughs> lasting memories are being put to this recording of teaching English in Japan and all the shame that comes with it. But you're yeah. not just a, a former English teacher in Japan. You're also a, a full-time Twitch streamer, aren't you? Mr. Premier too? Yes. Well, I mean, there are a lot of people who can claim to be full-time Twitch streamers. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think that when I first started teaching, it, the, teaching is considered kind of the great shame of, of jobs in Japan. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on, hold on. And then I became a Twitch streamer and I realized, no, there's lower. <laughs> So I, I am okay, but no, it is. Got him. Yeah, it's true. Um, but no, t teaching is an interesting profession, right? Of, mm. of course, in most yeah. societies, it's highly respected. Mm. And then you take one look at someone like me and you realize, maybe not. But <laughs> the thing is, is I think a lot of people want to come to Japan and they need an opportunity to yeah. do so. Yeah. Yes. And imagine, for example, you have no marketable skills or a theater degree. <laughs> Or really I'm selling not yourself naming, here, Peter. Yeah. Not names. <laughs> but if you did have those things, but you have a bachelor's, well, yeah. then you've got an opportunity to come to be a teacher okay. in Japan. That's so, just that's just Asia, right? It's, yeah, <laughs> it's it's just like it's, it was the same thing in Thailand, where you could like you could be the most under like all you need is a bachelor's and then you can get like any job you wanted and it could be and it could be any bachelor yeah yeah, yeah. well trust me i know yeah. i yeah. Uh, <laughs> i like in america I had, I had a theater degree right. which is about it's really good for waiting tables you're like you're a great waiter. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> tips. you get tips well yeah, yeah. and that's um but when you come to japan and you do teach I think the expat community or the other people who are in Japan mm. look, you know, they look down upon it pretty heavily. Okay, so that's one thing I've wanted to ask straight up, all right? Because like, I think there's a lot of people who watch Trash Taste and just like Japan content in general, right? Yeah. Who obviously they're like, I want to be able to go to Japan. And when they go do their research, they realize, okay, the easiest way is to become an English teacher in Japan, right? Like yeah. that's like the, the easiest like gateway method, right? But like, I think, I think the general consensus of like, English teachers in Japan being like, a, as you put it, like a shameful like position or I guess oh. history. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I personally haven't heard much about that. <laughs> so obviously you have the experience of yeah. being in yeah. that position. None of us do. Yeah. Because, so like, why do you think that is the case? Mm. Yeah, because uh, I think we've met like a few English teachers yeah. uh, who have lived in Japan, but I think you have one of the most interesting stories mm -hmm. out, out of like most, uh, out of like a lot of people we've met and also, um, you have like, unlike a lot of people we've brought on who is who have also lived in Japan, you've had the true expat experience, I <laughs> yeah, think. Yeah, for sure. Because you've, li you've lived in Japan for how long now? Uh, almost uh, 11 years, 12 years now. <laughs> 12 years. There's something like, I get, it, time <laughs> loses meaning yeah. after yeah. a certain point. It came, I came here right after the Tohoku earthquake of 2011. Oh. Okay. So about two weeks, that was a while ago. Mm. But yeah, two- um, <laughs> A while ago. It was a long time. <laughs> I think though, to answer your question mm. about why it's kind of disrespected, and I, I do want to be clear, as much as I'm joking around, mm. yeah. teaching can be a good profession here. Yep. But the reason it's looked down upon is we have to deconstruct like what is a teacher and what is an English teacher as a foreigner. Okay. You're not okay. going to be you know, reading Socrates and explaining all of these cool <laughs> Shakespearean stories. Mm. You are hired as an entertainer and or clown. <laughs> And wait, you wait, really wait, have to, court, this is an important, jester. this is, you are the court jester and you have right. to imagine you're, you're not in a college setting, right? Mm. right? You're teaching potentially kids who are anywhere from the ages of zero all the way through high school. Mm. And if you're in elementary school or junior high, or especially, you know, uh, the kind of a Kiowa special clown, like additional education outside special of school. Special clown. <laughs> you are, you, you better clown, get the big shoes and the red buttons and be ready to sing some songs right. and create some ridiculous lessons yeah. to make English fun and interactive. Okay, so mm. I've, 
I've, uh, you know, I've heard about being an English teacher in Japan and a lot of like other Asian countries, but what does that actually entail? What is, what responsibilities are on you and how much do you have to plan? I imagine like, it's different based on what school and what. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's what's so, like the typical like step-by-step -step process as a full-time Is there a typical yeah. one? Well, if, let's, there, go there with, one yeah. let's go with like the, the three different scenarios. I think this will help kind of simplify it. Sure. Let's right. start with the Eikaiwa, okay. which uh, a lot of people who did not get into a school, teach at an Eikaiwa. Yeah. Those are lessons that students come to anywhere from like two years old up to maybe elementary school. Mm. Those are usually planned out for you or you have some sort of reference from a book that some other expat wrote in 1977. <laughs> and you're like, all right, so we're gonna teach colors today. And it, it can be pretty brutal. Like a normal yeah. lesson would be something like this. And this is why I highly recommend you think very hard about being a teacher. <laughs> you walk into the classroom yeah. and there's mm -hmm. about 13 kids screaming, crying, sneezing, yeah. puking, whatever. <laughs> and they're all shitting. They're all just <laughs> playing with toys and stuff. And yeah. you give them like, like five or six minutes of toy time. And this is the hardest part. A lot of the times, this is one of the first times that parents are leaving their kids alone. Right. So right. And we encourage them, you tape up all the walls and you say like, just don't look through the window and the doors. <laughs> don't be visible because when the door shuts and I start, we need them to just be distracted and not think, where's my mom and where's right, my dad? Right. Yeah, yeah. That never works. Um, <laughs> so, like zero percent. So you'll close the door and you'll be like, all right. And there's like songs you go like, God, you're gonna give me PTSD. <laughs> you say like- I um, wanna hear the yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you're lucky I can't stand up and do the full performance, but right. you go, clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere, clean up, <laughs> clean up. Everybody do your share. So you have to- So you're about to say everyone do your shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone clean up your shit. And so, yeah. yeah, that, and then they realize, my parents aren't here and the waterworks begin. It doesn't uh, matter if it's the first lesson or the 10th, this is something that you have to grapple with. Sure, and yeah. you, you bought your, you know, strawberry frappuccino with the $3 that you've made this year teaching and you're just like, I wish this was alcohol, this is alcohol. <laughs> and then it's just, you gotta do this every single day, right, five yeah. or six days a week yeah. um, in perpetuity until you can escape that job. So this is obviously- This is the Eikaiwa version. Yeah, so this is obviously like targeted towards, you know, like what, average age? I would say anywhere from uh, two yeah. all the way until early middle school. And the middle schoolers are a bit, mm. the classes are smaller. Right. It's a bit more personal. You can just say like, what are you studying in, in, yeah. in school yeah. today? Let me help yeah. you. So those are kind of fun, but yeah. anywhere in the, the baby mm. to- The baby race. Who's the babysitter who's- Yeah, yeah. babysitter. Oh man, something. it is, it is, not, but it, it can be rewarding, of course. I'm yeah. saying that because I had two or three good memories, but it is fun <laughs> to see kids and you help them learn like what does the color blue look like in, right, right. in English. All right, so- what, what are the other, you said that was the first That's one. the first one. Yeah. Then the next is elementary school. Yeah. And okay. so now you have to start wearing the suit and you have to start going oh, to school and sitting with the morning meetings with the teachers. And there's a lot of differences from like America. Like as a teacher, you'd walk up to the, the principal and you'd say like, and he'd be like, Ew. and then you'd go sit down. And then now you're, now you're kind of in this world where you have a, an abundance of free time mm -hmm. and you have no idea how to spend it because you don't have any money yeah. and you, you can study Japanese or you could, you know, look busy on the computer. But then the classes you have anywhere from three to five a day. Mm. And it's like talking about the weather or you go in there and tell them about, you know, numbers or mm. emotions. And then you repeat this for, 65 right. years and then uh Oof. but then the final one is you get into junior and high school junior high school and high school yeah yeah those are considered i would say the best positions especially yeah. high school mm. finally the kids have an opportunity to start explaining you know their experiences and their like they, can, they can actually talk to you yeah. well let's not mm. jump the gun uh, <laughs> some can yes some some can talk to you yeah but at least you can kind of extract some some information that's not, you know, mm. what train do you like? It's Dr. Yellow, the Shinkansen. Wow, that's amazing. Or <laughs> your favorite color is blue. Okay. And how old are you? I'm seven. Thank you. You know, those yeah. are the basics. But mm. then in high school, you really get an opportunity, like you said, to have conversations. If they choose to. Yeah. If they choose to, <laughs> or if they can, or if they, mostly if they choose to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so going back yeah. even all, all the way before this, so what made you want to move to Japan in the first place? Mm. Because I, like, I assume you discovered teaching English because that was 
one of the most prevalent ways to like get to move to Japan, right? <laughs> it was. Um, well, for me, I have a very unique history, I guess. When I, it's, very, it's very unusual. When I was 19, I was in college. Right. I had to think about that. Yeah. Uh, and I was taking a Japanese lesson because I just had seen some Japanese movies that I thought were cool. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, that yeah, sounds yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Battle Royale was still really popular. Yeah. And yeah. Akira Kurosawa films, my buddies. And of course, video games. Um, so I took this Japanese class and I was completely failing it. I'm so bad. <laughs> it's a, a theme throughout my language <laughs> studies. But uh, they said, the, the teacher said, hey, we need somebody to be a host family because this person lost their original host family because of a disagreement or something. Right. And I was thinking, damn, that would be so sick. I could like play Street Fighter with this dude and we could hang out all the time and I could learn Japanese. And I was like, I'll do that. That sounds cool. Yeah. And it ended up being a girl who lived it with my mother and I for like, Two or three years, okay. and whoa, and I had two to, or three years. Well, we that, got a, that's long for a host family, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, like usually they don't last. It's like maybe like I three to like six a, months, I it was like a week or something. A I week? I I, no, no. I think no. on average it's like maybe three months. I guess from that distance, we, I, I did it with like Irish kids. And that was, we did that for like a week. And that was too much. <laughs> well, I'm sure I, I, like, what are you? I, did, I did not get along well with my Irish counterpart. Yeah. <laughs> no, cause uh, Sydney did the same thing as well. She had a, she, uh, she had a host. Uh, oh, she, had a she was a host family as well. Oh, right. And she had the, <laughs> so she had the choice uh, between uh, her parents wanted to, uh, become a host family for yeah. someone abroad. And Sydney was going through her weeb face. She, she was like, pick someone Japanese. <laughs> and that's, it's like, I beg of you. I beg of you. This one looks nice. This one, yeah. the Japanese one, yeah. please. Well, uh, I'm, I'm thankful that she didn't have a catalog or I would have never come to Japan because I don't think she would have chose me. But my mom was, you know, my, <laughs> my sister had just moved out. And so mm. it was kind of cool because I was living in the basement like any normal American boy. As you do, and yeah. of course, and then she took like my sister's old room upstairs and so we i think it was a bit longer even when i went to college in a different city mm -hmm. uh, she stayed at the house and oh, wow. stuff wow but she said you know your family's been so kind to to me mm. why don't i introduce you to my family and you visit japan mm. so right. i was like 20 21 and she lived in yokohama which okay. is a really nice place mm -hmm. to visit and i i loved it man it was such a transformative part of my life yeah. where I was like studying acting and I, I could read the tea leaves, so to speak. I was like- What, what year was this? Song? This was 1964. No, I'm kidding. I, I just, <laughs> no, this was 2004 or oh, 2005. Wow. Or, or I was, I was 10. This was so different from now. <laughs> well, yes, it was. Well, that was when Akihabara was still the electric See, city. that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Because when I went to Akihabara, it was insane. Yeah. When I was growing up, Akihabara was a place of legend. Yeah. Every video game magazines that EGM or Game Players or PSM, mm. Tips and Tricks, they would have a correspondent from Akihabara yeah. talking yeah. about the sites and the games and the oh, arcades. Yeah. That must be so cool. It yeah. was a, there was like three maid cafes as opposed to now where there's three hundred maid yeah. cafes. <laughs> you went there and it was the hobby mm, town. Mm, so right. anyway, I had a great experience and I said, you know, if, if acting doesn't work out, <laughs> <laughs> I will I will come to Japan someday again. So right. I visited two more times and then at 26 I finally got my college degree mm. a little later than some would say. Um but I I made the move and that's where I started in, in Niigata which is on the west coast mm -hmm. of Japan. But that's why I was interested in coming for sure. Okay, right. So did you go through the jet program like everyone else? I applied and yeah. and that sounds lame. I uh, <laughs> I meant I made it to the interview phase, but right. I graduated in winter as opposed to like spring or summer like yeah. most students. Yeah. yeah. And their interviews are in like late fall. So they said uh, you've made it to the interview phase, but it would take about 9 more months to have Oh shit. So I was like Okay, I'll, I'll put that in my back pocket, but I'll, I'll check out like newsletters or online sources. And if I can find a opportunity, we'll see how it works. And right. mine was marketed as beautiful beach town in the Western coast of Japan. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, let's fucking go. <laughs> really? And Where I, in, what's your source? <laughs> uh, yeah. This wasn't with Jet, this was with- like, It was uh, the Heart Corporation. And uh, what the fuck what is fuck's that? that? We don't know yet. I think it may have not even been a real company, but uh, they- <laughs> Just a dude in his face. <laughs> actually- When you arrived, it was crazy, right? <laughs> well, uh, man, it was such a mess. So, you know, I got hired the day before the earthquake. Oh shit. And oh so, my God. Then the plane and the moving was pretty rapid from there. Mm. And so I was trying to contact this source, but not be, cause they were in, um, it was like kind of, it was in Ibaraki was okay, where their yeah, head yeah. office was, which was kind of close enough to yeah. the earthquake. Yeah, right. And I was messaging him, I was like, uh, 
do I, uh, how do I, do I have a job, but don't answer me unless it's, you can or, yeah. I, you know, you don't, <laughs> it's not me. It's yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. It's not, like, I just was trying to yeah. figure out what am I doing? Yeah. And he was like, yes, come to Japan. And I was like, I don't have a visa or anything. He's like, we'll sort it later. And I was like, <laughs> no, that's that's a red flag. Flag. Yeah, I was like, red flag, no way, let's go. Um, <laughs> oh, you answered, you were like, Tours. So when I got there, I was on a tourist visa uh -huh, and I, right. I showed up and I took a bus by myself to Ibadaki and it was still struggling from the, yeah, the yeah. earthquake. And we went into basically a basement and there was still manila folders and, and files all over the floor. Mm, right. And the guy was just, you know, the, the definition of an expat who has been in the teaching game too long. Right. He was just like, okay, everyone, uh, you're, you're going to, uh, and I was like, he got that? And he's like, uh, yeah. And I was like, okay, sure. And we had a two day <laughs> training. It was bad. It was really good. So we had two days of training. Um, most of it was centered around, this is a sad thing. It was, uh, don't be inappropriate to the children, which is, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I kind of figured that part out. Of my <laughs> uh, I, you never got to tell me, bro. We like, a course for that? What was the well, that was like, <laughs> it was like seven of the eight hours like was what? examples of what not to do. Like what kind for of example, example? Okay. Don't show pornography. That's, I was like, okay. Wow, thank you for telling I was me. Like, I like, had oh, that shit, one on my bingo sheet. Yeah. Uh, well, um, the, the Italian Senate could never. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. They it's were like, all right, I'll delete so, the fucking Spinal Fantasy. Sorry, Italians. Porn. I guess yeah. you're out of there now. I was like, well, <laughs> three terabytes gone. Uh, there it went. The next one may surprise you. You're not supposed to date students. Oh my wow. God. Wow. So, Didn't know that one. And I was sitting there thinking, what have I done? Just another guy like, just got up and left. Well, I was like, like I'm out. Well, yeah. <laughs> Did they show you like a safety video for this? Be like, there was no, there was actually limited electricity even because right. there was, they were doing like energy. And I, but I was thinking like, and I, I did ask, I was like, what is, why are you telling us the most obvious information ever? And he yeah. was like, well, the previous people who were teaching, they all lost their contract because of a, a guy or girl, I don't know who it was, but like did something inappropriate. Oh my so God. the entire, and it wasn't that company. It was right. a different, and then they right, got hired. Right. So my contract was only for three months. So we were the replacements and I guess they were very eager not to have something happen. Any problems, yeah. yeah. But I was nice. like, okay, well, what about the actual like, um, teaching part? Do I, I don't have any experience? Do I need any of that? And he's uh, like, you'll be fine. And I was like, <laughs> I was like well, no how, how many schools do I have? Like just the, like, is it a high school? He's like, you have seven. And I was like, what? I was, that's what I said. And I was like, <laughs> what does that mean? He's like, you have five elementary schools and two junior high schools. And I was like, but there's only like five days in a working week. <laughs> and he was like, oh, that's right. You're gonna go like, you're gonna to switch schools at lunchtime and uh, you'll have to do these things. Whoa. This was a very exciting phase. And so then after those two days, <laughs> what the fuck? where you learn- Very exciting, this is terrifying. Well, yeah, it was, but you know, you were in it and you- just, <laughs> I didn't But I'm a, in Japan. I was like, I don't have a phone. I don't have a carrier. I didn't have a phone for my first four was it, months. Was it yeah. weird being like totally disconnected from your home? Like, yeah, it was. And it was, it was tough because you're coming from something like, like I had my entire life's possessions in like uh. two or three suitcases. And uh, imagine, you know, you weebs with your toys and your pillows <laughs> and your- Whatever the fuck you weebs carry. Yeah, whatever you guys have, your, I don't know, clothing. And then you have to consolidate all of that down into two suitcases, right? I did that yeah. too. Oh, well then that's not as cool as it made it sound then. So, uh, <laughs> it was mainly you PCs. Weaves, yeah, 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 mainly, mainly PCs. PCs. Yeah. So I didn't have a computer. I didn't oh, have anything. Right. The, the iPhone 3S had just come out to put yeah. this in perspective. There are probably some kids watching this that are like, the what? The what? Yeah, <laughs> I know it's so bad and I'm so old, but um, no, no. it's cool though. But they gave me a car and they put a washing machine in the back and they said, just drive like eight hours that way. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> wait, 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 they gave you a car? Yeah, yeah, I had to have a car because my my classes were, you know, Joetsu, where I was staying, it is not a walkable I mean, once you're city. outside of Tokyo, you need yeah, a car. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know, but like, and they just told where you did to... this car come from? Don't you need well, a lot you know, of documents? I'm sure you do need them, but. <laughs> You know, we're just it was like, yeah, yeah, so I just found a car on the yeah. side of the road. I keyed it. Hot wired it. He's like, go, yeah. go, go, go. It's like, go, so get it out. You found this company through Google, right? I, it was actually a More thing. like Craigslist or some shit? Like <laughs> <laughs> That's the name. No, I'm kidding. It was actually <laughs> Alibaba. similar. It was called um, Ohio Sensei. And it was a like a monthly newsletter that they would send out that had listings of opportunities. Oh. Okay. 95% oh. of them were, if you're in Japan, here oh, is what. Oh, okay. right, right, right. But right. there was like one that was like, 
we'll hire anyone. And I was like, that's me. I can do that. <laughs> so I don't have any experience driving in Japan. I don't even totally familiar with all of the rules. And Not things. to mention it's the wrong it's side. It's on the, yeah, the left the, side, the, right? The, the wrong you, uh, side. Yeah. Did you have a driver's license? I did. I was a pizza delivery man in the United States. So I, uh, I'm okay. no stranger. But to did you have an international license? Wait a minute. No, I'm kidding. I, <laughs> I, I did. I had okay. a, okay. but Just those sure, yeah. for Americans, those only last a year and then you can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's so. everyone, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, after that, do you guys have to take you, the test? You get a, yeah, you got yeah. We don't have to take a test for the UK, ah. but uh, in Japan- they The US, only, you have to be Yeah, we gotta outside. do the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in Japan, if you move here, cause you're a resident, you're only, for the first year, you're allowed to use an international driving license. And then mm. after that, you're not allowed to use it. Yeah. Cause yeah. you're a resident. So you either have to get a Japanese driver's license or you have to convert your current license wherever the country is to a Japanese Okay. Well, um, I had that piece of paper. Yeah. And yeah, then, uh, yeah. I drove west or wherever it was. And then I finally, after about 11 or 12 hours, I hit of driving, the coastline. <laughs> I hit the coastline. And then I had to go south because I overshot it. But like, <laughs> you, I got there and um, it was kind of crazy because there were six other teachers with me. Mm. Um, and we were meeting in like literally a basement. And it, it, it even kind of reminds me of like a cinematic thing with like, the swinging like lamp, lamp yeah. and it was like very low light. <laughs> and like, you'd see people's faces for like two seconds. It's like a mafia and film. <laughs> it really was, and people are smoking in there. And I, I was late and they were like, you know, so our final guest. And I'm like, oh. That's literally like a movie. It yeah. really was. Yeah. And so guy, huh? we were looking at this giant map of Niigata mm. and everybody right. had a color code that, that signified where we were. And I was like, it's like or not, it's like Reservoir Dogs. I'm like Mr. Pink or something. I was like, yeah. I was like, I don't see my my things like anywhere. And they're yeah. like, No, you have to do that because you've already driven here. And I was like, Okay. And then we like unfurled the map like three <laughs> squares, and I was over in the mountains, <laughs> and it was like the most uh, kind of isolated part. Right. Of, right. Of yeah, this. Yeah, pretty can get yeah. mountainous. Oh yeah. yeah. The elementary school had 31 students total. So it had one first grader. It had like five or six <laughs> second graders. That's a non-non beauty shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, hi, I'm your English teacher. You know, and it was um, the, to my great surprise though, I, I started at the junior high school and, it's, mm. and, and I get there and they had a, a grand welcoming for me. And I, I've mentioned right. this story before on my streams or things, but yeah. I walk out into this, this, this theater, this auditorium or gym or whatever. Yeah. And there's like the brass band playing, yeah. all right. eight of them. And then it's like, you know, there's like a kid hitting the cymbals. And then, uh, <laughs> and then there's like the teachers and everyone's clapping. Yeah. And there was this one kid by like the, the like the wings of the stage. Yeah. And he was like looking for someone and they were like, hit it. And he like yanked it down, nothing happened. And he like did it again. And it unfurled this ginormous poster that said, welcome Petter. <laughs> I, I, I was like, uh, given my recent training, there will be no petting. I was like, Petter. And I was like, ah, oh man, that's not my name, but I'll go with it. So, oh my it, God. It, Just roll with it. I was like, hey, I guess I'm Petter now. Petter's here, let's go. And so I was like, all right, this is gonna be interesting. And you know, some of the things, if you're thinking about being a teacher, you need to realize is you have like a school lunch, which is made by like a nutritionist and you might get mm. like fish heads or, mm. you know, right. really healthy things. A balanced diet. Yeah. A balanced diet. Yeah. And you get like a carton of milk. You don't get a separate lunch from like the teachers. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's very, and you got to eat with the kids a lot of the time. Yeah. You go to wow. different classes and you're like sitting in and you're like, okay, I'm too fat for this shit. And you're like, uh, hey kids, how you doing? And you're like, and you don't know how to use <laughs> chopsticks maybe, or, yeah. you know, there's a lot of things you don't know. You're really yeah. thrown in the deep end. Culture yeah. differences, yeah. yeah. And so for me, I had to do a lot of farming and agriculture work. My, Cause because, you're in the mountains? Because I'm in the mountains. Right, right. So I had to teach them like the names of animals they may slaughter or raise, <laughs> I guess, or animal husbandry <laughs> or like equipment or, you know, and then they were like, well, it's time for you to go out to the fields and plant some rice or, you know, <laughs> we're gonna do hard backbreaking labor. What? Like, what? It's actually shocking the amount of like schools that still do that to this day. No. Yes. Yes. I mean, yes. in, the, in the mountains, they still like do that. Of, what kind of stuff we're doing? So for the Undokai, which is the sports festival, we planted our own rice so that by the harvest time, we could enjoy our, our the fruits of our labor. I guess that's right. kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Also, Ooh, that's cool. It's also because like a lot of these like kids that grow up in these kinds of environments, they end up working yeah, in farms yeah. 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 anyway, or they go to like high schools that are like agriculture based or like colleges that are agriculture based. Mm. So they're just like, well, let's implant this knowledge into them while they're young. <laughs> Cause they're probably gonna end up in that <laughs> occupation anyway. 
and the English teacher who's there by accident. It's, it's you know, <laughs> and uh, learn our culture, <laughs> yes, do our work. Do. Well, it was tough because I showed up in like a suit, and I remember, uh, oh, you know, I'm like, hey, what's up? And there, and it's brutally hot. It's not a yeah. beach town. This is not a resort. <laughs> it's the most humid city on planet Earth. I yeah. swear. Yeah. And uh, I was like, they're like, today we're gonna run around this giant, you know, like two or three kilometer field that was like their harvesting field, but mm. every morning the students and teachers all do three laps oh to like God. promote, I don't know, health. And I was like, I'm wearing like, you know, a suit. And he was like, the, the principal, really nice guy. He was like, oh, daijoubu, daijoubu, eto. And he was like, I think I have some old soccer shorts. And he got me some umbros. And umbros are like what I remember from like eight years old, which are like these sequenced soccer shorts. Yeah. And I am not, the same size of uh, a thin Japanese man. And I put those things on and it was like the <laughs> tightest, uh, like shorts. I barely got my thigh through, you know, the, and now I'm like, and so I'm running Did you look like a pedo? You look like a pedo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, is that, who's that new teacher? And so I'm like running in like dress shoes and umbros and a suit and, or a shirt with a tie. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I've made a terrible mistake, uh, yes. but, these parts I actually enjoyed. Um, yeah. mm. These kids had a real, real charming quality to them. They were very innocent. They were very intelligent, mm. and they actually taught me a lot of things. But I needed to quickly learn that I am not a teacher. Mm. I am not. I'm not here to promote a lot of the concepts that you would learn as an English student mm. in right. your schools. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here to provide the one thing, and I think a lot of English teachers who come here make this mistake. You got to remind yourself: what is the one thing? that a native English speaker has that Japanese teachers do not, and that you can feel and know the language, yeah. right? Yeah. So you can make it interactive, you mm. can make it fun, and it doesn't have to be about grammar and vocabulary and mm. writing stuff. It can be, yeah. but yeah, so that's, I think a lot of people come here with the expectation of, oh, well, you know, I'll be a teacher. No, you will not. <laughs> you will be planting rice in, in gym shorts, or you will be welcomed with banners that say Petter or, you know, <laughs> driving to new places. But I think it has gotten better the last 10 years, certainly since when I showed up. I really yeah. I, I hope I so. Hope so. Hope so. I really hope yeah. so. It's become yeah. a lot more mainstream, that's for sure. Yeah. It mm. certainly has. And uh, But even then, I'd say English teaching was a massive industry, even probably bigger than it is now due to some changes that they've made with the way Aikaiwas work. So mm. um, do you want me to continue this? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's it's super fast. I'm so sorry. Um, no, no, no. I've never heard of the, like, the entire process yeah, yeah, from beginning to end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, one second. I don't know, I just need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is sponsored by Boxu. Guys, Sakura season is just around the corner. Oh, and every year, Boxu is sharing the beauty of the cherry blossoms by releasing their limited edition snack collection. Ooh, Check oh, it out. Oh, oh my God. But for those of you who don't know, let me tell you about what Boxu is. Boxu delivers the experience of tasting authentic Japanese snacks, candies, and teas sourced directly from centuries old small family businesses right to your door. Ooh. Connor, which one do you want to try? This is the Yatsu Hasashi Senbei. Yatsu Hasashi is the little snack that you can get in Kyoto, by the way. It's very famous in Kyoto. Oh. And we got the organic Genmai the tea pairing, guys. Lovely. That goes beautifully with sweets. Joey, what's this one I've got here? That's, well, let's try this one out. That's Sakura Mochi. I'm gonna finish this actually. Finish that? Yeah. that was a Sakura oh. Mochi. God damn. Honestly, I've been really enjoying Mochi recently. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I picked it. I knew it was Mochi. I just wanted Joey to say it. So if you want to have your very own Sakura celebration and support our channel, click the link in the description down below and use our coupon code TRASHTASTE15 to get $15 off your very first box order. Thank you very much, Boxy, for sponsoring us today. This episode is sponsored by Holtz Gun. Do you want wood? Hell yeah, I do. Well, Joey, we've got plenty of wood right here. Woo! Straight from Austria. Holtz Gun is a high quality watch and jewelry maker that has numerous and very designs for men and women. And guess what? The majority of this stuff is made from the highest quality wood. Is that a purse made out of entirely wood, that Joey? That is. Oh sorry, my sorry. My goodness. My name's Joey now, yes. Look, <laughs> look at that. That's actually Honestly, sick. Joey, what's that on your wrist right there? <laughs> this right here? <laughs> this is a high quality Holtzkern watch. Look at this. I love this color, this blue color. Just someone who wears a lot of watches, this looks sick. We're so excited to be a part of this that we want you guys to be a part of their Valentine's <gasps> promotion, guys. Oh my Lord. It runs from January 16th to February 5th, which is almost over. So get your hands on it now. And just for you guys, 
guys watching this video a gift, a Valentine's gift from us to you. If you use the coupon code TASTE15 at checkout, you get 15% off your order oh. and a free custom wooden postcard. Oh. So what are you waiting for? Get closer to nature and smash that link in the description down below by getting yourself some holes good. Back to the episode. Uh, the three months ended and I ended up working inside of an Ito Yokado for a new a startup super, supermarket for those a giant supermarket, yeah. which has clothing stores, it has um, shoe stores, toy departments. It's like a mall. It's like the Walmart basically. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they're all unique stores though. They all yeah. their own little stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this guy who had helped me be a liaison with the first company I came with, yeah. he thought I had some real potential. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, uh, Potential in what? Teaching, like oh, okay. I, like I, I right. guess if I, you know, self-deprecating aside, I, I think I'm a pretty okay communicator, and I, oh, yeah, I can motivate very much. So, well. yeah. So you got potential, kid. I got potential. Yeah. So he was like, I want to start a new company with just you as the main teacher. You're the only teacher, and we're gonna right. set up in this this supermarket mall place. Okay. And I was like, okay. And uh, I'm getting a massive increase in my salary. Mm. And I was like, that sounds great. And he found me an apartment. Um, I had to give the car back, so it had to be within walking distance. This is still in Niigata. Yeah. This right? is still in Niigata. Right. And, but winter's approaching. Mm -hmm. I did not know that Niigata leads uh, the nation in snowfall every yeah. year. Oh yeah. It's, it's insane. insane. Oh, so, yeah. be be before we get yeah. to this point, what, what did you do about accommodation prior to this? Did they give you a place? They did. Okay, okay. And uh, <laughs> they, they, uh, they almost every single corporation will give you a place to stay. Cause from what it sounds like, it just sounds like you hit the ground running. You like landed and the next few days you were- It's like, you're leaving here now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It really was. And yeah. I mean, to reiterate again, it's no cell phone. There's no, I have no PC. Mm. Yeah. I, um, I don't speak the language, certainly. Was there and, ever a point where you're like, I think I made a mistake here? Uh, like, almost every day, but uh, <laughs> but see, for me though, no, yeah. I didn't. I, I think f I'd already kind of, the die had been cast in my opinion. And right. I, I there are, there are very few, honestly speaking, I wake up still to this day, and this sounds so cheesy, but I always find something new in Japan to enjoy or mm. that, or that I, I like yeah. about yeah, Japan. Absolutely. Yeah. And I knew when I went back to America, my first time during this, this career, <laughs> I thought I miss home as mm. in Japan. And yeah, I was like, right. yeah, that's, that's where I live now. So yeah, yeah. there was a yeah, lot yeah, of trials. Yeah. I, was, I was dead broke for about seven years of my life. Like right. could not, you'd have to choice of like the month of October. You're like, go out and have fun with my friends once or eat. Um, I'll go out with my friends and just make it work. So like Jeez. Th it was the, the finances, especially can be really tight in yeah. Tokyo, Yokohama and they don't pay a lot. So yeah. sure, yeah. So, so like, anyway, to, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, it starts <laughs> snowing a lot. I'm working in this super mall, this uh, supermarket mall place. And I realized this guy has actually no business sense at all. And uh, oh, no. we have no oh. curriculum, we have Oof. no materials, yeah. but uh, I, I show up every day at the uh, this, this place. And I'm the only guy there. And I, I didn't know this in these malls, mm. all of the shop owners stand outside when the, when it, right when it opens and you all say like, welcome in Japanese. Mm. And I think the, the word for that is Irashaimase. Irashaimase, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And I, I was going out there every morning and I was going, Irashaimase! And I was negating that. I was like, you're not welcome here. Cause I didn't hear it right. And like, Irashaimase. Yeah. yeah. I, I added oh, like, uh, I was yeah. like, <laughs> you're not welcome. I was like, don't come to my shop. I don't care. And I was, and then finally this, this guy who sold Italian clothes next to me, yeah. I never saw a single purchase there, but he, <laughs> and he was like, he wrote a message and he was like, you are foolish. You keep saying you're not welcome. I think he was saying, I made a mistake, but yeah, yeah. I was like, that's you are foolish. foolish. I, was, I, was, I was like, that's fine. Um, so, you fool. I was like, yes I am. I, and so what ended up happening, a long story short, mm. um, this business crumbled almost immediately. Okay. And did you get paid at all? I did, but there was real, oh, I should mention, they, they did finally get me a, a work visa on my second month working. So I worked illegally for about nine oh. weeks. <laughs> And then they finally got me the thing. Yeah. So they okay. should have, that sounds like it was, they kind of dragged you here, didn't tell you anything. It was a then, mess. Yeah, that sounds yeah. like they did. It's almost like deeply. they were like hoping you would quit after the first couple no, of months. No, I mean, it's, right. it's mm. just sounds like they were just needlessly risking, because it wouldn't harm them if you got yeah. it. No, you know? certainly not. Oh, yeah, true, and true. well, I give them some benefit of the doubt, given that yes, they were unorganized, certainly, uh. but, 
um, there was the big earthquake, and maybe that that slowed down some of the. I, so. I don't yeah. know. That's what I hope could happened. Be. Could, yeah. be. could be. So this guy went out of business. Well, so we ended up selling this, and sometimes Japanese businesses get kind of creative with how they sell programs and things. And we yeah. had like a point system where like okay. you could buy thirty three million points, and each lesson you could choose to spend twelve thousand of them for fifty. And I was like, this makes no sense to me. But yeah. he wanted people to buy lessons in bulk, so that right. we would pocket a lot of initial money. And then he lost it all in pachinko, like every day. So, no. oh yes, he did. If I needed to find him for something, oh, no. I didn't have to go far to the local pachinko place. No. And and he he was like, we How were. How did he even get this money to get off the ground? I was, think they gave him a fairly sizable loan to and uh, you know to do this. Or they wanted at the pachinko. Yeah. Or he <laughs> wanted at the pachinko. I and can't. I, be I could not imagine going. Just to be like, where's my boss? Oh, he's gambling all my wage away. Yeah. Well, that and we still didn't have the the right formula for like, what am I teaching exactly? Like, yeah. I don't know what's happening. But I made the best of it that I could. And his brother, who spoke about 35 words of English, helped write some of the AB dialogues. And those made absolutely no sense. Uh, they would- AB dialogues are conversation. It's a conversation yeah. between two characters. And it'd be like, hello. And he'd be like, die. And I'd be like, what? <laughs> uh, I'd be like, I was like, I don't think that's where we should start because this is at a grocery store. And he's like, Standard what to do when you run into a murder? I also, I also know, I know, I know that there is uh, malls and there are different things, but I'd never heard of lessons. English lessons g given out in a mall. No, we no. were pretty much the pioneers of this one. Uh, <laughs> and, well, to be fair, at Ito Yokado, sometimes you can find uh, a, a, an Eikaiwa that's kind of closed off a bit for children, mm. right. but we had marketed ours for an, an adult. So mm, I was done right. teaching kids. I've played too much dodgeball and soccer, and, and it's been, yeah, you know, I was right. like, I want to try. And planning rice. <laughs> and planning rice. You actually wanted to teach English. Uh, yeah. That's what I Folk. thought, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then so his AB dialogues, and he always defended them by saying, they're omoshiroi. I'd be like, yeah. so the, the scene would be like, we're packing for a a trip to America. Yeah. And I'd say like, honey, where's my underwear? And she'd be like, you ate it? And I'd be like, this doesn't make sense. <laughs> like none of it, it, this is not even like a real conversation. <laughs> Average American have. conversation. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was like, we need to rewrite these to be like, you know, did Realistic. you, what's the flight number? Did you confirm yeah. the passport stuff? Or let's go through like useful. And we had a lot of uh, <laughs> discussions about this and his, right. while he was just gambling pachinko. Right. And um, needless to say, it kind of became this finger. He wasn't moving his feet to renew my visa. And uh, this now gets into pretty scary territory where mm. he's like, I'll recontract you for another year, but you know, we're not making enough money. You're gonna have to take a huge cut in salary. And I was like, you've been, we hired like these other people to help. Yeah. Like, uh, cause you know, we, I needed somebody in the classroom who spoke Japanese to yeah. help. If I was Explain, like, this is what right? I want yeah. to tell you. Yeah. And he would miss their payments for like four months. And they were Japan, <sighs> these really sweet Japanese women. And you're just thinking, this is not working. So yeah. Yeah. I, I had very little money left. I packed up and I visited a friend in Tokyo and I had two days to find a job before I had to go back. Right. And uh, I, I went through various places and I found an Eikaiwa, which I had not taught at before other than my own failed business venture where, you know, right. I was mm. the prodigy of English teaching. Mm. And uh, we found this one mm. and I thought this is perfect because the emphasis was English through drama. And I thought, okay. that's perfect. Yeah, I can do yeah. that. Yeah. That was the biggest mistake of my entire life. <laughs> what? That was the worst job I've ever had. And I, and I got to say, if, again. So you just rock up to this place and you're like, I want a job. Well, yeah, I was yeah. begging, um, but it was yeah. it was something like that. I, I remember, you know, I talked to the guy and I said, listen, I, I, I've got to get this place. I don't have a place to live. Mm. I'm out of money. I'm out of time. I can start any, just, I have to get out of this. And he was like, it's okay, mate. It's all right. Calm down. Mm. And I. I remember he looked at me right in the face and he was like, you're gonna be a good teacher and it's gonna be all right. <laughs> Welcome home. And I said like, oh, thank you so much, mister. You're so kind. And now he's like, time to die. You know, and I was like, oh God, it's overwork. So anyway, that was the hardest one because you teach, I had this class called Joyland and Joyland was four hours and yeah. it was two year olds and one and a half year olds. Oh. And you eat lunch with them, you, you sing songs, you do things. And it's the hours are from like 11 a.m. or 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Oh. But there's breaks in like the middle or, Jeez. you know, this is the Eikaiwa lifestyle. Yeah. So right. you have to be ready to be paid very little and be always on call. And the materials are there for you, but it's it's mm. a really stressful situation. And mm. I, I think that was the unhealthiest I've ever been. It was a really tough job. Mm. And after about a year of that, I 
I couldn't hack it. I just couldn't do it. And I was like, all right, I got an opportunity to teach at a high school. And that was when I started to really change my outlook of why I think teaching is a good job in right. this country. Uh -huh. If you take it seriously and you can find ways to make it entertaining, but also start adding in a lot more educational elements, mm -hmm. yeah. then you can start saying like, yeah, you know what? I can teach English. I'm actually knowledgeable. I've, I've studied this. Mm. And then by the end of my career, I switched to a private high school in Tokyo with a guaranteed like pension with like um, a bonuses and like a, in perpetuity. I could work there forever. Mm. And yeah. that's very, very rare in this mm. country. Yeah, so yeah. I think to make a, this whole thing make sense, if you really want to be in Japan, it's not bad to be a, an English teacher. It's, mm. it's, it's, yeah, people are going to make fun of you. Yeah, you're going to feel like this is not what I thought it was. Do, okay, mm. wait. Do yeah. people make fun of you? Yeah, what? of course. Well, okay. I, I, I haven't heard of that, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard of that. I guess I, the only place I've ever heard of it or seen it is when people try to, I suppose, you know, people who have moved here and have managed to move here without going through the common teaching route. I think there's some kind of like uh, superiority complex where it's like, I did it not in the way that everyone else uh, did it. Yeah. I did it in my own way. I used right. my own skills to get here. Like right. I, I didn't just apply to right. this English thing. Right. I'm not like everyone else. <laughs> well, I think it's, it's like that in everything, right? Yeah, Whenever yeah, anyone does sure. something yeah. out of the norm, they want to feel like they're better. So I think yeah, that's for where sure. it comes yeah. from. Well, um, I mean, it has a bad reputation because the salary is so low. What right. is like yeah. the average So like, on an Eikaiwa, I mean, okay, wait, let's see. This has been a while. So this is 10 years ago where I started. My first month's stuff was about Juku Man, so about nineteen hundred dollars a month. But I was in the countryside. It's in yen, though, right? So it's in yen. So, oh, well, yeah. you know, it changes depending true, on the true, year. True, so, like, yeah. let's just say one hundred yen is a dollar for the sake of argument. So yeah, about yeah. nineteen hundred dollars. Yeah, so yeah. about nineteen hundred dollars a month, and that was actually pretty good for that area, mm -hmm. you know. And I was doing all right, and I could live. And I'm, I'm sure like the a, cost of living was a lot lower. Well. So yeah. I think my rent was four hundred dollars, <laughs> and I had I had like a three LDK. It was damn. It was oh. I had like a tatami room. Yeah, I had like um a like a bathroom. I, just, I live in poverty, I feel like now, like, <laughs> yeah. when you move to Tokyo, like this table is bigger than my apartment now. So like, but like it's, you know, it was really spacious and it was yeah. really nice. But um, then when you move to, to the Eikaiwa, it was about 2,300 a month, mm. which in Tokyo, Yokohama, it gets pretty uh, tough. Yeah, you know, yeah. That can get, uh, yeah. Especially when you have like municipal tax in this country is very rent high. Is at least yeah. half of that. Yeah. yeah, the rent was uh, 900 a month for me. Yeah. Now it's with a discount and, um. <laughs> And you also have to pay things like health insurance, and yep. there's, a, there's, there's a lot of stuff that mm. you're not, you're not aware of. Taxes. Then I took a pay cut to teach at high school, and, and I worked at Interac, which is a very famous placement company yep. for schools, not Ekaiwas. And that one paid about, and then the, of course income tax as well, so you don't take home 23. Yeah. That was about 2200 a month, and it was, man, there were times, seriously, where you, I had to eat just eggs and rice for like six weeks doing oh, because and you need to know this one thing if you do work at those schools they will take out 60 percent in august because there's no classes so you get prorated pay so you, if you what? whatever it's 60 percent of 2200 was you're looking at like a paycheck that's eight or seven hundred dollars. Wait, yeah. just, just August or more? No, months? there's more actually. So that's the biggest one though. Well, August, then, August is the summer holidays. Yeah. Right? What yeah. the so fuck? They could do that? They do that. Yes. And then you have in December and January, there's like seventy-five to eighty percent pay. Mm. Then you have it again in uh, March because right. the end of school year. This is something that is the hardest part because some months you'll feel good. And then the holidays come around and everyone wants to go out and have a beer or celebrate. Yeah. But the August payment is two months later. So it's right on that October 1st pay, right. you get $700. <sighs> and you're like, and you're like so this you isn't even gonna pay the rent. No, um, it doesn't. And luckily, you know, if you're responsible, you'll have no problems. <laughs> <laughs> if you're responsible. If you're so, responsible. Uh, That's crazy. Yeah, it, was pretty, it was pretty tough. Um, Damn. Now to kind of give you the other side, where I worked at the private high school, mm. I made really, really decent money. Not yeah. even close to what I would consider a teacher should make of that effort of like mm, how yeah. much you're there. But that one was closer to in a yearly sum, 35 to 45,000 a year, okay. which is, yeah. is, that's a very respect. And it, um, I had an opportunity to keep growing that each year I stayed. Mm. God, so that's, that's pretty good then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, I would say, I just being honest, it's probably one or 2% of people can get those opportunities. It's yeah. called a direct yeah. hire. Okay. So you cut out the middleman and you get a well, so yeah, Directly like from the school. Yeah. Right, right. So those are very hard to get, but those are, those are very rewarding and the kids can be, it's a, 
the, the last thing you got to remember though is Japanese work culture, man. It's horrible. It's the <laughs> yeah. worst. Yeah. It's the worst. Yeah. Um, you will be there sometimes six days a week, if not seven. Right. You will do things outside of the scope of your contract routinely. Yeah. And you are expected to go and socialize with coworkers and be a part of these things. Whether it's today, we're going to proctor tests for eight hours. And in Japan, that means you do not move. You do not speak. You cannot check your phone. And if a student knocks like their pencil off the table of their desk, they can't even pick it up. You have to go and be like, here you are. You can't speak though. You just <laughs> ominously throw it down in their face. So <laughs> these happen like six or seven times a year with testing. Right. So those are like weeks of your life where you're sitting yeah. and just thinking and there's nothing worse than being left alone with your thoughts on like a beautiful day. Yeah. So well, I've never thought about that. I, uh, cause, yeah. Cause like I, I can remember taking tests in like school and stuff. Mm. And I can't remember what, what my teachers were doing. Well, they, the it was, they would hire examiners. Oh, they really? Were like, they were like third parties uh, people because obviously the teachers are teaching still during exams, so they can't they can't oversee the exams. Oh, oh see, we oh. we have like a whole testing block, so it'd be like, all right, it's finals or university entrance examination kind of pretest. Yeah. So all the teachers have no classes, but we take a buddy oh. system, right? And you'd sit there for stand there for ninety minutes and just make sure no one's cheating. And it's like, man, this is brutal. And uh, those things are like, today we're having a setsumeikai, which is like an informational day because mm. we got to recruit students. Mm. So everyone down to the arena so we can set up 475 chairs manually, you know, like setting these things and pulling them out of the thing. And then you do all this stuff like waiting. And in Japan, you're like, you say yeah. that like 4,000 times, like come this way. And then- As the if you don't know where the fuck the entrance is. <laughs> no, I, it's not just the entrance. You guide them along like 18 people are pointing you to oh like a straight yeah. line. And you're like, yeah. okay. And they always put the, you know, they put me out front because I got a, a winning smile and a, <laughs> I'm like, hey, welcome. To, and, they're, and the parents are just like walking by yeah. and you're like, okay. Um, but those the outside of the teaching stuff is a major part of your work. And you'll mm. sit in meetings legitimately yeah. for six or seven hours and you have no idea what's being talked about. Yeah. And I, I'll lean over to like an English teacher. I'm like, what are we talking about? And she's like, they're discussing sock colors. And I'm like, what? We've been here for three hours. I was like, purple, blue, white. And they're just like, no, this is a very important discussion. So we, it, it's those things amplified times a hundred. What are they like yeah. trying to figure out the fucking hexadecimal? So, yeah. <laughs> so, so the, the, the shift would be hard anyway, having to do it. And then on top of that, you have hours upon hours of time where you just feel like your time is being wasted and Unbelievably so. It, yeah, it, right. yeah, cause like I I interned yeah, at a insane. Japanese tech company during college for like three months uh, in Tokyo, like in Shibuya. Right. Um, and those three months were more than enough time for me to be like, I do not want to be part of this cycle. Cause it was exactly the same. Like I had, when I was employed, like I had like a set list of things that was my job, like day-to-day -day basis, right? It's like, you know, I, I did like website design and like SEO design and stuff like that. But 90%, of the day <laughs> was shit that I had a no expertise mm, in or right. B I had no knowledge in. So I was like forced to like sit with like these clients for this company. And they're talking about some kind of fucking higher end business shit. And I'm just sitting there being like, Why do, am I do, do you want me to like take notes? And they're like, no, 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 just be here. And I'm like, <laughs> why am I here? I could, I could have finished my job today by yeah. now if I, didn't have this meeting. So it's like, no, 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 mm. you have to be here though. It's mm. company policy. I'm like, is it? Cause I'm not fucking doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the reality. It's and horrible. It's also, he speaks Japanese. So yeah. yeah, I'm just sitting there and it's like, I have, uh, I hate when people say I have ADHD, right? But I, I like literally have it. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I was like the first kid who had it. And the treatments, <laughs> like when we were kids, I remember um, my mom took me to like this ADHD specialist. Pioneer of ADHD. I seriously was. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they were like, I invented ADHD. Well, actually. They, I, they, they put you on all these different pills. Yeah. Which my mom, I think, was like, I'll just take those. You don't need them. And I was like, those are uppers, aren't they? And I'm like, okay. But they, they gave me a. Uh, they gave me these headphones that were like giant, like 1970s cans. Like yeah, these yeah, things. Yeah. And I had to listen to whales communicating for like three hours a night <laughs> to try to calm your mind. And I was like, this is, I was like, nine. I thought that was just like a meme. No, I am the meme. So <laughs> I, am, I am, that's me. Holy shit. So we did that. We did had it a, help? A, 
I don't think I'm stable. I think, uh, <laughs> I, think I, I don't know what happened to me, but like, I don't think it helped. I was like eight or nine. And so I was a kid. And so like, I had some real, real issues, uh, but, but my mom was very patient. But like, you know, the ADHD uh, part of me, when you're sitting in a room for seven hours and yeah. you can't read a book, you can't, you can't, oh do, my God. you just have to sit there. So it did, that actually helped me more than the whales did because you really learn to be totally patient with like the opportunity. Mm. But I do feel bad. I, I want to say one thing really quick about teaching because yeah. I've totally shit on it for like 30 minutes. <laughs> right. Teaching can be really fun. It's mm. in the classroom is, I think with high school, especially it can be really satisfying and, mm. and very rewarding. And you get to see some kids make like genuine progress. Mm. And I like preparing my own lessons. I like doing that stuff. Yeah. Um, though I did it for probably nine years too long, but I still think if that's the job that gets you into a country you wanna be in, mm. whether it's Japan or somewhere else, I would, I would take it still. I, I have no regrets mm, yeah. over those experiences. I have a lot. I'm leaving out all the funny stories, but like- Yeah, I mean, you have a treasure yeah, chart. Yeah, yeah. stories yeah, that we'll, came we'll out of that. that. Yeah, yeah, we'll like, that. Th those, those experiences are definitely, they've helped me in so many different ways. Mm, but yeah. my advice would be find another outside the school's income, something to supplement it, yeah. something like um, private lessons, or if you have some other skills, you join a, a hobby that pays somehow mm. uh, that will help you enjoy your life in japan more than the the working mm. 75 yeah. hours a week yeah. part yeah. of it but yeah those are all very different experiences but they're all very it was a. Uh, it's pretty shit on by everybody most people <laughs> if you ask them like what do you do in japan they'll be like um <laughs> i I teach English, but I also <laughs> I, uh, I teach yoga once every three months. Yeah. You know, like that's awesome. But you know, we kind of meme it up a bit to each other. It's kind right. of like, a, right. you know, we're like ah, another day teaching English. You know, it's it's tough. Yeah, <laughs> that, I, that's what Jeez. I think. I think it's pretty it's pretty mocked. So how did you go like? Um, how did you go in terms of your process of like planning lessons and stuff like that? Was you, did you just like make it up on the fly? Like you, you probably you have, like have to like follow a curriculum. Basic right? plan, right? Well, do you have a curriculum or something to follow? You, you, so it varies depending on the school, but I'll give you like two or three examples. Sometimes right. the curriculum is 100% either faxed to you from the company, like today's Fax, colors, yeah. you know, um, and it'll be like, this is the layout, this is the intro, this is the middle, huh. or, the, or you'll have a giant book that has a, to, this is the sequence of lessons we're teaching this year. Mm -hmm. Today's right. lesson is this. Yeah. Um, and then the other ones, that's step one. That's usually like an Akaiwa or elementary school. Mm. It's right. pretty simplified and straightforward. Yeah. yeah. Second one is like, I would say the middle school area where you have, or early high school, like eight first year students, you work very closely with an English teacher who is their Japanese primary. Uh, Japanese teacher who teaches English. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry. Then they will say, you know, I'm really, I've taught them this grammar point but I'm having trouble making an activity so that we could reuse it or like make it fun. So oh, then you're okay. like, okay, well, let me, uh, let me see what I got. Do my you know, let me, <laughs> let me put on the clown shoes real quick. <laughs> I was like, I've got that ready to go. And um, it's like Superman, but you just have the buttons that are just like <laughs> things. And I, I start putting on the makeup. But uh, those are, yeah, you, uh, the common ones are like a bingo or a Jeopardy or some mm. sort of interactive dialogue or, you know. Right. And then, when you get into high school, one of the, my favorite things was I actually, well, if I must admit, I made my own textbook. Thank you. Oh. But like, oh. And it never got published, but you know, I got to use it in the class that I taught. But for me, it was the perfect opportunity because they said, we've created a class just for you. Mm, right. We want you to teach these students, but we, we're leaving it open-ended to you, but right. I need you to write up a, a detailed like yearly outline. Like what is your, your pedagogy? What are you gonna try to bring to them? What are the mm. midterms? What are the finals? How is it being school? All that stuff. Right. And I, I really used my previous six years of teaching mm -hmm. and it was really kind of nice to be able to put all of those ideas into one mm. single package. And so yeah. Yeah. as you get more experience, and I think if you take it seriously, you have a lot more control over how you want those lessons to go. Mm. But sometimes you can tell immediately, you get in there and you're like, oh, I got the best game ever. We're gonna play this cool rock, scissors, paper game. And like 10 minutes later, you're like, this shit's horrible and no one's having fun. And I got, you look at the clock and you're like, that wasn't even 10 minutes, I was three. And you're like, I got 47 more minutes. And then you're like, all right, clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere. And you just, uh, it, it, that like, part. This shit always works. Yeah. Yeah. But so you learn a lot about, which I think has helped me in acting definitely 
ha, huh, that degree was useful. Yeah. Yes. You know, being agile or being able to think on your feet. And, improvising. Um, yeah. Improvising is yeah. a massive one. And it's kind of cool. You get this, you talk to teachers who've done it for a while. Mm. You get this internal clock where you, you don't even need to see the thing anymore, like on the wall. You already know that that's, that game has already been long enough. Yeah. So let's let's wrap it up and go to this other thing. And if I need to add or detract some time, you can do it. Yo, it's awesome. It's a really fun feeling being, right. you know, the your own little star of a classroom. Yeah. So it's fun. Yeah. Hell yeah. Right, yep. Well. But that's that's the how you make a lesson. Yeah. I, I got to wow. ask because like, you know, we would we've seen we see like high school movies and everything like that and in America there's normally like some delinquents and stuff like that. Oh, I got to know because like my image of Japanese school kids is that they're very well behaved and stuff like that. <laughs> um, is that is that true or uh, not? So well, like, yes, I would say 97 percent of students are very well behaved if not too behaved right. where you're like it's like show so some hard to yeah. show some it's like hello yeah. is there anyone in there yeah. yeah and so but then you i did teach at a school once that was a delinquent level school where they had been delinquent level school yeah so if you don't well, there's a school that all the delinquents conglomerate yeah, yeah. and so yeah. one kid could have you know had a you know violent past the other kid could just be really shy and then these two girls could just be like i just need to i dropped out but like you got to teach some and those are the ones where it's really awkward you're like today's lessons is and then somebody in the back would be like titties and you're like nope that's not today's lesson he's like ball sack and you're like no that's not on there either do you want to try again he's just like titty ball sack and i'm like are you a student because you, <laughs> you look 31 and he'll be like oh and then he'll like leave or something. You're like, okay. Those, you do get kids. Like I remember one, I we had a group photo right. and I, I felt so bad for this co-teacher. She's quite young and she was like 24, 25. And we taught this course and all of them were a sports course. So they were like mm. really into all of the things that a, you know, a, a hot blooded young man will be into. And, and you know, that's not great to be in that scenario right. with this poor young teacher. And we took a group photo and right at the last second, three of the baseball boys dropped their pants and they're just like in their whitey tighties <laughs> just posing. And this is like for the school. And I'm like, we can't have that. Let's try taking that again. Yeah. And then six kids took their pants off. Oh, oh no. And I was like, all right, that's, I'm getting fired. I was like, <laughs> they're like, how was your English lesson? I was like, well, we stripped. And then kids were swinging their, you know, they're, those kids are very rare, but I think yeah. once they learn a bad word, oh man, or, or they'll be, they'll say like, Pito Sensei, and I'll be like, yeah. And he's like, Opai ski desu ka? And I'm like, what's that word? And it's boobs. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll be like, I've never heard that. And he's like, Opai. And I was like, no, I've eaten the top of He's like, <laughs> and you're like, uh, I never heard that. And then they'll just keep digging it deeper and right. yeah. to get a reaction. To get a yeah, reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you could say to yourself, uh, oh, they sound like YouTube comments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, those kids are they're 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 memorable, but it's pretty mm. rare because I'd say most kids are extremely well behaved. Right. And, yeah. 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 But you do get some characters who who want to learn about the different words of they've seen on a an American TV show or right. or they watch this podcast or you know they they've learned some, <laughs> they've learned some new words. Yeah. But yeah, that part can be tough. But in high school, at the private one, you got to be pretty straight laced. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. <laughs> I, I, one complaint I often hear um, teachers or Japanese teachers, um, uh, well, not Japanese, uh, it, it, foreigners teaching uh, English in Japan, mm. is that um, it often feels like you're very replaceable. Extremely. Like you're, you're almost always made to feel that like, oh, we're waiting for you to leave so we can get the next person in. Mm. Like there's almost a sense of you, you're not valued as like a, a member of the team, mm. uh, in a sense. I don't know if I'm capturing that quite. No, correctly. you're you're definitely the. Are we are we recording this? Or yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I'll just. I thought you were just. We, we didn't stop recording, by the way. Uh, that's so. okay. So, uh, yeah, you're right. so um, you're definitely not a core part of the the team. The, yeah. The, in yeah. fact, a lot of the times they'll sit the foreigner group into their own little square, if not oh. in a different room completely. Jesus Christ. And then that's actually better actually than being a part of the group sometimes yeah. because yeah. then you have shared tasks. But yeah. the thing you mentioned is, I think the turnover rate is so high for yeah. teachers in Japan that the, 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 the real teachers don't want to get a chance to get to know you attached or mm. figure out your methods. It's just, hey man, you just gotta do it. And another thing is it's actually a rule in Japan that every six or seven years, the, all of the teachers must rotate out of the school. 
So you can't, oh. yeah, this is a real thing. So you'll is be- that, Is that a reason why? I think it's to encourage not resting on your laurels or-, or Wait, every, every every teacher? Every teacher. So you'll go Whoa. and teach with a guy like, you know, Mr. Uh, Ishikawa or something. And he'll be like, two years, uh, in two years he's gone. Like, that's it. But then another teacher was there for like five more. So mm. you, you kind of get used to that or, or huh. a teacher will come back and he'll, he'll be like, ah, oh, not scushy. It's very nostalgic. I used to work here 14 years ago. And you're like, wow, okay. So they get sent to different schools. And sometimes that's literally a horrific change because you can go from like a really great school uh. that has model students to a, a delinquent school or, or to a tech school or yeah. those huh. are not bad schools, but I mean like you could be Different used to something yeah. that can be very stressful. Yeah. And uh, the same is for the, the foreign teachers. We, um, unless it's a private school, you can be hired there forever, mm. which is my last job. But the other ones you get used to the shuffle and it's a, dr huh. it's a terrible dread when you go to the, the meetings and you're like, what's my assignment this year? Uh. Or on the Akaiwa, you might have, when I was an Akaiwa teacher for the drama one, I had about five different locations, like all around Japan. I'd be like Yoyogi, which is in Tokyo. And I'd be like in Kemioka, which is the opposite end of Yokohama. Or you have like a different day, you'd go to a different yeah. studio. Jesus. At the beginning of the year, you'd get your new assignment and it'd be like six new places that may or may not be anywhere close to your home. So they, 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 they have gotchified. <laughs> they do. They do reimburse. <laughs> they have oh, gotchified okay. teachers. They've as well gotchified now. it all, man. What the? I was like, all right, this year, please give me the S. Yeah, I'm like, every time I think there's something Japan can't gotchify, they prove me wrong, baby. Yes. Gotcha, gotcha occupations. Yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, I got that. I never got an S, by the way. I, yeah. I got a lot yeah. of Ls. Yeah. That's a, uh, that's a- I, I'd heard of a few cases where someone had been uh, given their location where they were gonna teach in Japan and it was so remote or shit that they just didn't enjoy it and they just left. Like Niigata. Maybe like, <laughs> yeah. like well, Niigata is one of the better ones, honestly. Well, I mean, yeah. Cause you could be really remote. Like well, some people I, yeah. have to take like boats or- Yeah, yeah. I, I, had a, I had a friend who taught in the middle of the mountains in Mie. Oh man. And that's like really fucking middle yeah. of nowhere. And people would just leave. They, they wouldn't yeah. say anything. They would just, I'm going back to Tokyo, I'm getting the flight back. I'm, yeah. I'm not doing this. Like, yeah, it's especially, you know, jets notoriously. A jet is a government sponsored program. I think it's mm -hmm. called like the Japanese exchange teaching program or something yeah. like that. But yeah. they have great money and great benefits and mm. a lot of holiday time. And that's, if you do want to come and teach, I highly recommend that's the first option, right? Yeah. Yeah. right? They guarantee you some some money. But the thing is, it's the great gotcha of our day. You have very little agency in where you are placed. Yeah, so yeah. You, you you pass the interview and they ask you, was there any particular location you'd like to, to teach at? And everyone matter. says Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, and, but that, that actually I've heard eliminates a lot of the people. Like, oh really? Because for a long time, jets were not in Tokyo until just about, four or five years ago, yeah. they finally right. opened it back up. But if you say like Osaka, Tokyo, Yokohama, they'll be like, we don't want you. Cause they can probably suss out that you're here for an anime pop-up convention or like right. another activity or something yeah, that's, right. you're focused you're, on- You're not here to experience the <laughs> real Japan. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's a quick way. But yeah, you'll get people who, you know, I met Jets when I was in Niigata and they would just be like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I've been here three years and it's like, it's so much snow but I like snowboarding now. And you're like, okay, but you're right. You could get sent to Ehime, yeah. which is a beautiful place, but it's nowhere near, it's a different it, island. It's not very eventful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's very uh, true. People will just, that's how I got my job. Or no, mine was because of the, yeah. The other one. Yeah, the, the other one. The other one, the <laughs> Prince Andrew stuff. But, uh, I don't think I can say that, but yeah. I probably can't say that, you but, can uh, say but like, you can say that's that. why yeah. we got kicked out, or they got kicked out, but like, yeah. it was not uncommon. <laughs> we got, wait, well, I don't know. They? Well, not, not, we were okay, but like okay. the- okay. Previous, the, uh, people. Yeah, the previous, previous people. Yeah, the previous people. Yeah. The, those, there were a lot of times where someone would like, just be like, they just ghosted. Even at my private mm. school, right when COVID hit, uh, this guy, this Texan was like, I'm out. I'm, and he left in the dead of night with his wife. Damn. And on the, like one of the last flights out of Tokyo. And we have like a, a full, he's a teacher. And so they were like, yeah. oh, Pita Sensei, you have a new, uh, you have six more lessons this year. And I'm like, <laughs> well, do I get six more times pay? Or is that, how does that work? Are we giving up his, his no, we're not? Okay. Well, and he just literally just left. He just left. And uh, I think he was a little bit, concerned with uh, the upcoming year of like what his responsibilities were. Uh. He was probably happy in the job itself. Yeah. And I think he was like, you know what? I'm not gonna be here for this COVID thing. I don't know the deal. I don't know. And then mm. he just gone. 
And he he messaged me, he called me and he was like, what's up, man? And it was like maybe 9.30 at night for me. Yeah. And I was like, dude, where are you at? Are you at like a studio? What's that? He's like, that's the sun. I'm at home in Texas. And I was like, what? And I was like, the the cornea virus is like Corona. I didn't know the name. <laughs> I had no cornea. idea. I, I didn't know what it was. I had no idea yet. It was still like, we didn't know what was going on yet. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, that shit's still out. And he was like, yeah, I left, man. And uh, if you want that TV you gave me, I, I left the door unlocked and I was like, what? Yeah, you live like, you just, it's, you just, you left the furniture and everything out. So yeah, Damn. that does happen. So Jesus Christ. Yeah. I well, because uh, it's a big problem, right? I suppose you can, there's nothing essentially stopping you from just upping and leaving. And Oh you know, yeah. yeah. It, Japanese people, you, you hear about Japanese people doing it all the time yeah. like, where yeah. they just want to escape. They're like sick of their work or whatever. And they just, it's called yonie in Japanese, but it's like, it's literally just escaping at night and just fucking leaving everything behind just out. Jesus. Man, like, and, and just going somewhere, oh, whether right. it's in Japan or a different country. Man, I'd be like, but I'd like take the PS5 though. I yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't like, fit in the backpack. I, I feel like I don't know. How, I don't know how, where this resolve comes from in people. I suppose the job is that soul crushing that. Uh, you sometimes you, that, you just yeah. wake up one day and you're, you're like, like, "Fuck it, I'm done." Yeah, I'm fuck just it. like I, I need a change. You yeah, know? it's um, crazy. Sometimes you just need to like, and that's escape, why, and right? that's one of the reasons why, like in this uh, day and age, like the the process of like. Of renting an apartment or a house or whatever it is is so strict because mm, yeah. they've had so many instances of tenants just fucking up and leaving, and yeah. then that causes all sorts of problems to not just like the building but also mm. like the insurance company all that kind of stuff. So that's why that's one of the few reasons why like it's so hard to get an apartment here because they're like, Damn. we're gonna give you this apartment, but you better not fucking run away. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's kind of sad that that's like that a measure case? that they have yeah. to take. Yeah. It's a, it's a stark reality when you enter the world of education. Yeah. Or just, or just Japanese home, workforce. Or just Japanese yeah. Work. Yeah. I think out of anyone I've ever met, you've had the most interesting side quests in Japan. <laughs> I think. Yeah. The stories you've uh, told yeah, me. Yeah, I've had, well, I mentioned you need to supplement your income. So yeah. if you had, a, I mean, you can surely tell some of the stories. They don't, if, if this was in a movie, some of the stuff that you got up to in Japan, everyone would be like, this is the stupidest movie ever made. It, may, it would be. It would be the stupidest movie ever made. <laughs> this doesn't make any um, sense. Uh, Why uh, would anyone do this? I mean, in a, in a, I've had so many random jobs. I My first one that I can remember doing, besides, I worked for NHK for a while. That was kind of cool. How did that yeah. all come about? So I found an advertisement or someone told me that they, you know, it's an open call yeah. and it's a show where they have like eight to 10 foreigners and they are all from different countries. Mm -hmm. And they say like, today's theme is something Japanese. It could mm -hmm. be like bentos. And then they send three of the foreigners out on location somewhere and they experience a different kind of bento. Maybe this is the most expensive one. Maybe this is the most beautiful one. All right. um, and then we talk about like, bentos in America, dude, would never work because there's no <laughs> burgers. And you know, <laughs> and like, like, okay. Valid. Yeah, and then, but like it was tough because you had to represent the entire nation. Right, so, yeah. of what? America. That's America. overwhelming power. <laughs> and I, so I get to say all the opinions and then be like, well, if they're right or wrong, it doesn't matter. But you had to be very careful. You just say things like, as far as I know, bone in is best. And then you'd have like, hey. a big, I'm just saying as an example, as an example. How, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> bone in is best. Oh, so, fine. but like, hey, uh, hey, that's what I'm talking, that's what I'm talking about. about. Finally, someone on the podcast that agrees with me. I just oh can't believe God. it took this long. <laughs> so, but yes. Um, that's all of America's opinion. Don't worry, yeah. uh, be, on behalf of me. <laughs> so, I would know, I worked at the NHK. <laughs> so it was that kind of job was cool because they gave you you know a couple hundred bucks a month and mm -hmm. you get to be on TV. And mm -hmm. since I was a theater background, it did keep me connected with like, oh, this is exciting. This is- Yeah, this yeah. Is performing. Yeah. yeah, performing, entertaining. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't like hang my hat on it thinking like I've made it, you know, but yeah. like it was a cool thing. And then I, I got to be an extra in a movie in Japan, which was awesome. Oh, it was called- okay. Vancouver no Asahi. And uh, it was a baseball movie. And I- um, The I Sunrise got, of Vancouver. The Sunrise of Vancouver. And it was like, a, uh, it was set in like 1920. And I, I was like, and the, I went to the costume thing. Cause we went out some field in the middle of God knows where, Saitama or something. And they were like, uh, Peter Davis? And I was like, Macy? And they were like, okay. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, all right, that'll work. And then he was like, uh, I was like the last guy. And they were like, well, all we have is like a, a medium and you're more of an L. And I was like, oh, so like the jacket, like, didn't fit and I, it, it like scrunched on, I look like yeah. homeless. And I, yeah. I, so I was like, no, I'll give my character like a, 
you know, like some backstory. Yeah. And I'll give him like a name, and I and his name was Chester Flint. It was a cool name. But um, and then I, I it was you know I was getting into it, and I decided all of my scenes took place at like a bar. Yeah. So I I just always made sure that anytime they said action, I was like the lowest one on the table, kind of like barely just like drinking as yeah. much as. And if ever there was food placed in front of me, Chester always needed like a little bit of because he didn't know his next meal was coming. So I had like the best night ever for like two yeah. days i got to eat and drink for free <laughs> although it wasn't beer it was like just flavored water but yeah, i, I went know. all in on that character and i thought you know i think i've got a real career here <laughs> uh n- no <laughs> i did not but like that was still cool because i got money mm-hmm. for it yeah, yeah hell yeah and right as i was coming back from that i had i had booked with an agency somehow <laughs> and they said we have this audition for you to be a a, a model for a furniture company called okamura okay and I, right. that's a legit furniture company yeah, yeah, i was yeah. like i was like yeah it sounds cool man and i go there and again just like the baseball film they had the wrong name they were like are you the cameraman and i was like no no i don't have any equipment and they're like that fuck it you're in <laughs> And uh, it was me and about 35 French models who were like 6'2 and jacked. Like right, I'm talking right. perfect bodies. Yeah, and, I, right. and I was like, all right, this is so bad. I'm s- This is so awkward. And we had a group audition. Yeah. And I was like the last guy in this <laughs> class. <laughs> and there was four of us in our group. It was three French guys and me. Yeah. And we had to go up to like the top where the Okamura, you know, sales presidents were waiting yeah. and I remember the French guy didn't hold the door open for me. It kind of like s- slammed into my foot and then I put, and then I knocked over this plant and this dirt went everywhere and I was like, I'm so sorry. And they're like, it's okay. And I was like, I'm starting to feel nervous. I'm starting to feel like, I don't think I look right for this job. I right. feel like it's all bad. And we sit on these stools and they said, you know, just introduce yourself. And the, the, the French guys were like in perfect Japanese. They were just like saying like, I've been modeling for six years. I've worked with, you know, uh, Gucci and, and Prada and yeah. all these things. And then they get to me and I'm like, hi, I was, uh, I like hamburgers and baseball. And uh, I was in a movie recently called, it's not out yet, but, and then they were like, okay, this guy. And the, you know, the sales staff is kind of watching me and taking a note and they're yeah. like, See why is he here? <laughs> and um, I I was like, okay, just you got this, man. Just you know, keep being funny, keep being you. Yeah. And they were like, now we just want to see you guys talk to each other, and you can have like a moment where we're just seeing you guys move naturally through the thing. And I was like, okay. So I turned to talk to the guy, and he immediately starts talking to like his French buddies, like just yeah, the three yeah. of them. And I was like, eh, je m'appelle Pierre. <laughs> I took French a little bit and I was like, <laughs> I was like uh, and then they kind of just totally ignored me. Yeah, and yeah. I turned back and I was looking at the sales staff and I was like, I'm sorry, man. I don't think I'm actually supposed to be here. And he was like, you said you like baseball. And I was like, yes, I do. He was like, what team do you like? And I was like, the Yakult Swallows are kind of a fun team because they've got the, uh, mm. the umbrellas. He was like, that's my favorite team. And so we started talking and I, ended, yeah. up, I ended up getting the job to be a model for Okamoto. Hell yeah. So I was so fuck excited. I was guys. like, yeah, fuck, fuck them, you guys. Man. I was, you know, and uh, they, they must have gone back to Gucci and Prada with their, <laughs> <laughs> So I can't believe we missed Okamoto. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and, back to Louis Vuitton. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, we, I, the thing was, we had to take a Shinkansen from Osaka. It uh-huh. was my first time taking a Shinkansen. I was so nervous. I could not even sleep the night before, right? I was right. just like. Of what? Modeling? Oh, uh, I mean, look. I thought, of the shink- I thought you were going to the train. I was like, damn, is the train that's No, no, no. But like, I was so nervous about this opportunity because it paid mm. a fair amount of money. Mm. And I was like, oh my God, this is, why am I modeling? I was like, what possible reason would they, cho-? and I go there and it's, <laughs> It's like this really beautiful woman and like this really handsome guy and then I'm there as well. And they were like, your clothes were over here. And it was like this really tight yellow polo that was kind of see-through. And I, you could see like, you know, like my belly button. And I was like feeling like, oh fuck, this is so awkward. And I walk out there with like my chinos and shirt and they're like, oh, we might need to do some changing of the shirts. And I was like, yeah, 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 it's fine though. And they were like, is that how you like your hair? And I was like, uh, no, I don't know. You know, I'm like, <laughs> so I, I realized in almost every scene that I was in, I was either at the back and they always instructed me that like, I couldn't get the fax machine to work or I'm walking past like a window with like dropping folders. Uh. And so all of my character was like, Okamura hires 
idiots too. And I, <laughs> and I was like, well, do I have like a cool part where I'm like at the, you know, the office chair and I'm like, I have like a cigar and I'm, I'm doing like a business deal. And they're like, no, 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 that's these guys. You're going to be like serving coffee or you spilled it on yourself. And I was like, damn, this is fun. So I, I had to take that and I, I, I parlayed that into a, uh, a job where I was a model, a second modeling gig, oh, oh my where God. this one was for a punching bag. So <laughs> you could buy that at Don Quixote. It was, um, I still have a-, a like, the, like the blow up ones? Yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. yeah I, got, I, I was on that one and I'm like- Wait, you're on the box? Yeah, it's oh, great. Oh shit. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring it here. You guys could put that on the floor. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, at the very bottom. But so like that one was cool because they brought this girl from like the Ukraine and she was like, absolutely the most beautiful person I've ever seen. And mm. she was like, I have 200 jobs in three days. Let's make it quick. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, wow, this is so sick. I'm like a real deal. And they were like, all right, so uh, you're going to be like, you know, holding her back. She's like aggressively punching this bag. And she felt really uncomfortable. Like, she, not because of me, I hope, but uh, <laughs> she, uh, she's like, don't touch me. You know what I'm like? I don't know. But they said, she's really not getting the look. Can you go in there and just gesticulate like your her job yeah, so she yeah. can see what it looked? And I was like, yeah, that's fine. So I got to do like, two jobs mm. for once. And then when we finally got it, I got to say the final product, she looks great. I look really stupid, but uh, it, I, they combed my hair like super to the side. And <laughs> I need to see this picture. Dude. Yeah, it's uh, it's like four different images on the box. Yeah. And uh, my students would find it at Don Quixote and they'd right. be like, Pito Sensei? And I was like, no, no, Zen Chigao. I don't know that man. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, it was, I'm Petter. I don't know who Peter is. Yeah. I don't so, know who Peter is. Then, um, Honestly, that Petter we've been uh, yeah. <laughs> saying so much about. It's It was tough. And then uh, in addition to that, I, I got into some voice acting work where I, I worked for a cult here in Japan where I did the voices. <laughs> This is I've heard this story, but we yeah. should probably hash it out. We should stop from the beginning. How did, you, how did this, this opportunity come around? Like well, this was actually one of the first uh, opportunities I had was because when in Niigata, I met a member of that church and they, they said, you have such a lovely voice. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. And they were like, you know, you should do work for our our or El Cantare or whatever. And I was like, yeah. what? I was like, no, I haven't had that on the menu yet. I was like, what's that? And they were like, no, no, no. They were, they were like, no, 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 that's, uh, that's the great one. I was like, oh, okay, I misheard that. But like, you know, and so I came to Tokyo and it was like when I was a young man and, um, well, I was 30. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was young comparatively, <laughs> but you know, in, in my experiences in yeah, the country. Thank you for that. That makes yeah. me feel so much better. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I had to clarify that. But like, we we go in there, and um, I I go into this 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 gilded building. It's this 18 story massive place. And they have them all around Japan. And I, I go in there and they were like, yeah, welcome. And I swear to God, I'm not making this up. The girl who was like the uh, receptionist, yeah. Must've been 21, 22, 23, really young, really attractive. And she had the sazai san dog as a stuffed, a big stuffed animal yeah. hugged to her chest. And she was like, welcome. And she'd say like, can you say welcome? And then she would like talk as the dog to me. And I was like, all right, let's go. And so I was like, uh, which one do I reply to? I was like, <laughs> do I talk to do the I dog or yeah, you? Yeah. And I was like, hi, hi, you know? And so they were like, all right, well, we got to go up to the top floor yeah. and we have your script ready and stuff. And I said, okay, we go to the top and um, the script had way too many English mistakes. Like it was, it was yeah. incomprehensible. Yeah. Like it didn't even make any sense. So they said, all right, well, we'll wheel out the YouTube videos of his speeches and then you can just read that along. But with, you know, like him. Yeah. And I said, okay, well set it up for me. What's the deal? And they were like, all right, do you know like who Jesus is? And I was like, yes. <laughs> I, was like, I, am, I am aware. I, I've aware. heard the name before. Yes. And they were like, all right, imagine that you can hear Jesus talking to you. And I was like, okay. I went to Catholic school for a year. I know what that's like. They're like, and Santa. And I was like, mm. <laughs> I was like, that's a very different voice. Uh, and then they were like, and you have like the prophet Muhammad or you have um, El Cantare, which I guess is a, another mm. being or Buddha or any, it, she listed like nine or 10 different like deities. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and she said, when you hear their voices, which is what our leader hears, you have to imbue that in English. 
And so I was like, you had to do like nine different voices. I had to feel nine different voices. <laughs> and just and every religion them out in, in the, world. the world. Yeah. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful, of course, to any religion, if of that's course. obviously, yeah. but like, yeah. this is what I was told. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, okay, this is really hard because I am unfamiliar with some of the ones we're mentioning. And I was right. like, do I just, just, I, they're like, you're fine. Just, you know. So they wheel out the TV and I'm looking at it and I'm like, okay, let's go. And it was, I, I sat there and I said, well, you know what? Just give it kind of a, a general stage voice and I, I was like okay so i was like the heavens have spoken and we can delete and recover all universes and they're like it's not a question i was like no i know i was just reading that and <laughs> I, was like, I was like all right can i try that again and they were like yeah but we really couldn't hear you know the voices and i was like right. well was there the voices i was like was there any one in particular was it like <laughs> santa that i was missing or, and so i was like all right so we, we do take two and, I, and I, they were like, just give it more. And I was like, yeah. all right, all right. So I was like, you know, the heavens have spoken and the deletion of universes is nigh. And they were like, stop, it's still not feeling it. And I was like, all right, well, I learned one thing in theater school. It's way easier to tell someone to do uh, less than it is to encourage people to do more. Mm, yeah. Also good for teaching advice. You know, it's it start them off as big as you can mm. and say, that's amazing. Let's keep most of it, but scale it back. So I went yeah. full Dynasty Warriors like three with it. I was like, <laughs> I was like, if they want to hear the voices, I'll go with whatever the most ridiculous. And I was like, you know, I was like, I'll move this a little bit further. <laughs> I was like, the heavens have spoken. <laughs> and then the girl was like, <laughs> and I was like, the deletion in creation. And then they were like, that's great. We did that shit for two hours. Oh and then I was my like, God. I had the best time of my life. I was like, that's great. And so, uh, but then, and I'm not making this up. I wish I was. They, right around the two hour mark, yeah. these like eight or nine dudes came in fully like robed up with gilded robes on the top. And I swear, on all of the voices that they, on one of the pillows, they had a gilded dagger, this golden dagger, and they were carrying it to the front for like a sermon of some sort. Uh. And she's like, our session's done. And I was like, okay, am I walking out of here alive or what's going on? And then they tried to like recruit me into the, if they, you know, they thought I had the voice. And so they said, yes. we could, if you want to come back and do it again, you need to be a member of the, 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 the group. The group. Uh. And I was like, ow. I'd love to, but I'm hearing some disagreements. So I'm gonna, I'll get back to you on that. And they were like, here's a Matsuya meal ticket. Enjoy your day. And in addition to the money I was paid. But yeah. I was okay, like, I was, I was, yeah, I was yeah, gonna ask, they did give me, I was like, oh, nice. You know, the beef bowl coupon. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, nice, Sick. a beef bowl. So, I didn't even know they had coupons. Yeah. Yeah. They do, oh, wow. surprisingly. Well, they did when I did that, but, or maybe it's only for select for religious people. cults. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we, I had that opportunity. And I, I mean, that's such a long story. I kind of detract, I got derailed oh, on my own, but like, story, yeah. yeah. So, so then you kind of have those opportunities come up every once in a while. And I've always been of the mind to like take them fully. And, and if, yeah. if you get some extra money out of it, it's, it's cool. And then of course, you know, that me being in all these weird places and having all these weird experiences kind of helped me be ready to do things. I think where I transitioned out of teaching. Yeah. So that's, that was a, it was a long nine years and there was other weird modeling jobs and there was other weird kind of like, oh. So, so you got in this whole rabbit hole of just modeling then from this well, or, one. Or, or, or just like odd jobs. Or like just odd, yeah, the I, oddest jobs. Yeah. The, some of the bad ones that you can still find on YouTube. It's like, I I, uh, I had to do, I was like a, I was like, of English textbook that they use all over Southeast Asia and uh, Japan. Uh, right. And people will f see me on like what I on do now and streaming and they'll say like, I, I just saw you in my class today. And I'm like, hello, Kaho, which notebook is yours? The blue one or the light blue one? And she'll be like, the blue one. And I'm like, they're both blue. Whose notebooks are these? They don't have names. Sorry, that's mine. Which one is yours, Kaho? The blue one is. Both are blue. <laughs> and, uh, and then it's like, I was like, well, I wish I could have that one back. <laughs> or I'm like, welcome to Sunshine Pizza. What's today's offer gonna be? But you know, um, those are, are there. But I think if you ask my friends, in addition to Japan, mm. uh, among my friends group, I, I, have, I had so many random jobs in America that it, from like from the ages of 18 to, you know, moving right. was just an endless cycle of like 
its own Netflix series. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it was weird. Is it just cause you say yes to like everything? Yeah. Cause well, I feel like you do, you I, know? Yeah. yeah, I yeah. think- That's why um, he's on here today. Yeah. 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 He didn't want to. He's, he's like, like, all right, oh, fine, I'll say yes. Uh, there was three French guys upstairs. <laughs> I was like, are those the normal guests? And you're like, they can't make it. And I'm like, I'll fill in. But uh, I think for me, I, I got this really cool advice as a young actor. And I think the hardest thing to acquire is unique experiences. Mm, and I think yeah. a lot of people fall into routines and I, yeah. I do too, but I am always keeping an ear open or you know some kind of opportunity, no matter what, mm. if I can get a unique experience out of that, then I mm. think it's worth yeah. doing. Oh, Even absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah, not just good for acting. That's just, yeah, good. That's just good life, life advice. Sometimes just, yeah. I will make a bad decision. I know it's a bad decision. Mm. I'm like, oh, the story will be good though. It yeah. will be a good, yeah. it will be a fun story it's, to tell. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah, it gets yeah. something out of it, you know? Yeah, and I, I mean, I think that a lot of people have told me I've had a very colorful life and a lot of interesting experiences, but <laughs> I think a nice lot of those are, yeah. yeah. But those opportunities do come to a lot of people. I think it's just, it's easier to just be like, ah, oh, nah. I don't want to do that. Yeah, or, for sure. Yeah. You know, because even if it seems like kind of trivial and like non important at the time, it most of the times you think about that. You know, five, ten years later, and you're like, "Fuck, I should have done that. I yeah. should have done yeah. that." El Cantare voice, yeah. damn it. Yeah. <laughs> well, the problem is you don't know what crazy stuff you're missing. And exactly. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You, you might not have been El Cantare. Uh, yeah. yeah. That you, and for two you, hours. I, ha I heard it all. You heard, you heard, so, the, you voices. heard the voices, the voices. <laughs> of every, so, ev every religion. Just makes you think about all the weird yeah. stuff that's happened in Japan that we'll never get to hear about because nobody's documenting or talking yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's, um, <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird, it's a really wild ride and uh, I wouldn't trade it for a thing, honestly. I think mm. um, even though those years were very hard, but <clears throat> yeah, finally at the, the ancient age of 39, I've, I've been able to see it through those those mm. tough parts. Mm. But I, I'm glad it was in Japan. I really do love it here. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And then, then obviously now you're you're a Twitch streaming full time, right? That's mm. your- Much to my family's great shame. Uh, no, my, my mom loves it. <laughs> I think it. my parents feel <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, if you thought teaching was bad, no. But I think, you know, Twitch is or streaming or YouTube or what any of you guys have yeah. done, well, podcasting. It just, it just seems like, no. Every time I taught you, it was like streaming was like made yeah. for you. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> With all of the experiences you have and like your background and everything, yeah. it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's, you can shine the way you want to really. Yeah. Well, it also I appreciate seems that. that you have a very interest. I, I like when you talk to me about it, cause I find that, cause you weren't raised mm. online. No. Well, I actually just, before yeah. you guys, you know, <laughs> I was raised like on the base of the internet, right, right, yeah. right. like the beginning of AOL yeah. Instant Messenger and yeah, E-Bombs yeah. World and You're the Man Now Dog and things that don't exist anymore. Right. That were memes way before we had words for memes. Yeah. Um, but then I took a nine year break when it really blew up yeah. because from 2000 and uh, when the 11 was the Tokyo earthquake. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't even have a PC for eight years. Wow. So I missed, of course you see it on the phone and stuff, but when, yeah. when YouTube really became a career mm, in yeah. the, the late 2000s and it kind of, opened these opportunities on Twitch like 2010, 2011. I, I was on the sidelines on that. And yeah, I, yeah, you yeah. guys have mm. such knowledge of it, but the things that we had back then are, are still, we, we dial up and net zero. And if you had DSL in your, your apartment blocks or your houses, everyone would just come over to your house to use the internet. Oh yeah. It was, a, it was a, the wild west back then. I think it was the, cool though. Yeah, it, it was actually a lot more fun, I how think. Did, how did you find out about Twitch then? Uh, so <clears> it's actually really interesting because no, it's not. I don't know why I gave that. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I have no idea why it's I said that. It's an interesting story. I just lied. I, I straight, that's up lied. straight up <laughs> false. Um, it is a story. <laughs> I had been into watching like Justin TV and stuff for mm. Evo and oh, fighting oh game tournaments. Oh God, Justin and TV. yeah, and then Twitch came about when I had started teaching at a high school and I started watching a ridiculous amount of Hearthstone during mm. the initial blow up of, of like Twitch. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I started getting into all of that stuff. And then I started streaming myself a little bit. I bought a PlayStation eye camera and oh. I tried and I, I, I was used like- the inbuilt PlayStation live streaming I thing. tried yeah, and I, I, I was <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not feeling this at all. Like it, yeah. it was, I wasn't ready for that opportunity yet. Yeah, I've never seen somebody stream uh, using the built-in like streaming tools. However, I have seen one person- I've tried do, it once. I've seen one person <laughs> do it who had a substantial viewership. Really? You know who it was? No. Yeah. It was like uh, Hitomi, uh, the, the- Hitomi Tanaka? You know, Hitomi Tanaka, <laughs> the porn The Japanese star. porn star? Yeah, she was playing. Uh, if you don't know her, you, you might know her. You, yeah, might, you will know her. You, <laughs> might, you, you probably <laughs> don't know you know her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she, I remember, I, she still streams on Twitch now. Yeah. Just, she just plays Fortnite. 
Wow. It's a built-in PlayStation. <laughs> Seriously. Holy shit. Yeah, no, wow. no commentary, nothing. It's just, just her playing Fortnite. And I guess people are just like, I could imagine the poop second thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was tough. I, was, I remember Overwatch had just come out, right? And I, I was playing that on the built-in streaming. 2016, doesn't that feel crazy? That yeah, that- came out? Fucking hell. So- Don't say I, that. Don't, yeah, don't sorry, say that. Don't. Sorry. don't. Sorry, How on. could yeah. you? Anyway, I was streaming that and I was playing as Hanzo and I was, you know, I was kind of like- Fucking Hanzo, man. Well, I mean, hey, you know, just <laughs> at, least at, not, time, at least he's not a like Genji, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> day God. one of playing, you yeah, know, yeah. I was just feeling it out. You know, I hadn't, I'm a- Zinyata main, really, the cool dude with the rock. Nice. I don't play Smart. Overwatch, it's a shitty <laughs> game. Anyway, but I was, anyway, I, I was doing this thing and I, I hit some dude with the headshot. And you know, everyone's first stream, I, you know, I was like, hey, good sh shot. <laughs> and this guy somehow took the time to like use the built in PlayStation thing and he was like, you are shit. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I am. I was like, what's up, man? Are you, well, hello? And then he never replied and I was like, oh, maybe that was the one and done, you know, that was it. All right. But like, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel fun. It didn't have the things, I didn't have the, the tools available to make mm. it what I wanted, what I'd seen. Yeah. So I was like, ah, all right, I, I'm done with this. And it wasn't until, you know, COVID that I, I got back into it. But yeah, it, it is a very interesting platform for people like me because it caters to what I grew up with, I think the most, which mm. I'm still what I would consider a dying breed on Twitch, which is really centered on, on games. And now I'm not saying that's not popular, of course, mm. but I think that what Twitch and YouTube streaming has done so well is there's these people innovating on it and doing bigger and, and more interesting and like actual events, right? Mm. Yeah. But I've always just wanted to recreate a, a kind of game nights with my buddies when we used to play Halo mm. 16 player yeah. when yeah. I was in high school. And oh, Twitch does, so cool. it was the best. It was, it was the best of times. Mm. Having LAN parties, Oh, and I wish. Oh, land parties. <sighs> it was something that, unless you were there, mm. you you. I'm very yeah. jealous. I never I'm got. So I, ne I never so got. I, I never got to experience like land parties. Man, oh, I, I used to have anything. Civ two land parties it back was, in like God. middle school. It was so fucking fun. No, none of my friends gamed like no, all of the parents knew how to set that up. Yeah, uh, man, it was like because those days you. I didn't even have an Xbox, right? But I had a big enough basement so that everybody could come over. Could bring their Xboxes. Smart. People, we'd bring three TVs so. People would have to move their, and this is not flat screens. These are not things. CRTs, that, yeah. These are these big ass 27 yeah. Yeah. inch monsters. Yeah. And we'd throw those in the back and you'd bring, I had my own controller. Cause you know, there was, there wasn't even wireless controllers yet. You just had like yeah. your wrapped up thing. Yeah, yeah. And we would, we would all bring over, uh, everybody had to bring over two cases of soda. That was the rule. Was either <laughs> two cases That's of soda. That's the payment. That is the payment. Yeah. And we, uh, every Midwest kid has a refrigerator in the garage as well. Yeah. Yep. So we would have 250, 260 cans in there and more. And then we'd have the four TVs, two in one room and then two in my bedroom. Mm. And they would all be connected with four That's feet. So and sick. it'd be eight on eight or whatever you were playing. That's could be so free for yeah. Yo, we would start at like seven. 7.30 and stop 12 hours later. My mom would go to work on Saturdays and I cannot believe she let us do this every <laughs> Friday for about 18 months. That just oh, sounds like so literally the best that Friday. Like the best it, 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 was, back, man. it was great. It yeah. was, but you know, a large, when online gaming came out, we all thought this is it. This is going to be great. We can have game night anytime. Mm. It's not the same. And um, the novelty wore off pretty quick because part of it's just being in a room and experiencing yeah. something yeah. exciting. And uh, Twitch is as close as I've ever felt because of the interactive nature of it mm. yeah. and the, the reactions. And um, though I could probably do a better job of, of taking the channel in a different direction. I love my game nights and I love doing those things. And luckily there's enough people who, who still like that stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, yeah, say, yeah. you say it's a dying breed, but I think, you know, there's a, a, a massive market of people who just want that like kind of simple, as you said, like game night feel, right? Like yeah. they, it's either, you know, whether it's built on nostalgia or just the fact that like, it's like, you know, some people don't go to Twitch to like see these like extravagant events. Mm. They just mm. want someone to hang out with. That's a, yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. yeah. but. Yeah. Yeah, I mean like a lot of Twitch is just, you know, being online a lot and just kind of like being there to fill in just the hanging gap. out. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like kind of like a friendship simulator. Yeah. 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 Being, being just being present. Yeah, being present. It's just just being there. Twitch is just, hey, just show up. Yeah. yeah. There, there is a nice element though for, for me personally where I, I worked as a radio DJ in America and I, I did theater for a long time and stuff and teaching to an extent you do have that element of performance time mm -hmm. where yeah. you get totally to agree. make totally some agree. jokes and you get mm. to, you get to, it's, it's your yeah. show yeah. and you yeah. get to say things and see if they hit or they did not. And uh, yeah. 
that to me is what keeps it fresh. And I, I am so thankful and humbled that anybody even bothers to click that. So like, <laughs> it's a very, it's a very exciting thing to do. After. I don't know, man. I, I, I tuned into your jump, jump King stream. Oh, yeah. And that was one of the funniest streams I've <laughs> ever it's watched in my life. I've, I've never seen someone who is playing a rage game where they're meant to rage and just come out of it so positively. <laughs> I'm like, how you the are, fuck you are you in doing? so many ways, the most positive dude I've met in my life. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you fall down five screens and you're like, that's, that's that's okay. We, we, let's do it again. Let's do yeah, it again. Man. That's no oddball on you know Halo with sixteen people that you want to kill you and like it's it's. Yeah. It, I've been through some of those fires, but yeah, to me, I, I realized early on. I remember on one of my early streaming days, I was playing like a Spider-Man game, and I mm. I it was the Miles Morales one, and I, mm -hmm. I didn't think the game was it was good, but I did. It was too much of the same for me. Yeah, and I was like, you know, I had like eight people in there and stuff, and I remember this guy was like. I was kind of talking shit on the game, saying like, "Well, you know, I think they've already. I've already. I've already felt like I've done this. Same city, same things." Yeah. And this guy was like, "I never talk in this chat, but I was so excited to see this game, and I was so excited to see you play it. And I and uh, you've just been so negative. And I thought to myself, well, thanks for watching the stream. We're ending now. Uh, but like that actually resonated because I have a choice, right? How I approach these things. Mm, and right. I could be upset and I could be negative, but I think that it's more fun to find the positive stuff in my, in my experience. Yeah, and, uh, my I British cogs in my brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I totally get it, but <laughs> I totally get it. But okay, it, okay. it, it that, that really, I was like, you're right. I, I have a choice of what kind of content that I, I want to provide. Yeah. So I'll just keep, I'll just keep doing, and I mean, I do get angry occasionally, but like, it's usually about my forehead size or something that, they'll, <laughs> oh, you know, they'll, they'll make fun of, um, the, my physical appearance, but not in a bad way, but like, yeah. like yeah. I was an Okamura furniture, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Were you a model? Yeah. Were you, you ever should have seen the French guys, guys I beat. Yeah. I'm talking yeah. to El Cante right yeah. now. Yeah. I've heard a lot of things that I'm not gonna repeat to you. Yeah. But yeah, so. <laughs> Santa Claus told yeah. <laughs> but so, so, Yeah, sometimes, cause you know, we've been on the internet for a long time. Mm. We, we are, have our, had a, have, have had our fair share of like mean comments, everything like of that. Course, so yes. we're like immune to a lot of it, but sometimes you just get that one comment. I don't know, maybe you just, it's just day, like the, the, one, the, the wrong one thing day, you're worrying yeah. about. That, yeah. that one thing you are really, really worried about or insecure about. And it's it's happened to me like live on Twitch and it's the worst when it happens live on Twitch. Cause you kind of like, you go from instantly, yeah, let's fucking do the stream to like, I just want to like end the stream yeah. right now. And I don't know how to like mask that fact. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Cause with a YouTube comment, you're like, fuck it. I'm I'm a, I'm gonna be pissed for like an hour. Go have like a nice meal or something. I'm just gonna find, try and forget it, and mm. then you wake up tomorrow like, all right, let's do it. But yeah. on stream, you're like, fuck, I, I'm, I'm still on, still on camera, man. <laughs> How do <laughs> like smile through the pain, smile through the pain, baby? Come on, and you can do this. A lot of times when you're streaming, you're like, fuck. I just, for something, for whatever reason made you feel like shit. Maybe you got a message that wasn't good from someone yeah. who's like, by the way, your house is burning down. You know what I mean? Like yeah, sometimes yeah, you, yeah. occasionally yeah. you, that's why I tend to try and not check my phone because sometimes you'll get a bad news or mm. something. Or yeah. Something will get canceled that you're looking forward to. And you're like, well, shit, my mood's kind of ruined. And now I got to keep streaming for two more hours at least. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, I, have, I have to keep yeah. streaming for a movie length and, I, and I'm not happy. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. tough. I'm pretty lucky, I think uh, most people in, this community I've had has been so amazing and yeah, supportive. Yeah, yeah. So I think like, I, 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 I will get those things, but usually I'm like, eh, they're right. I, I do need to exercise. That's, actually, <laughs> that's a good point. So well, I'll take yeah, that. I think, I think yeah. when, you, yeah. when you use it as a, like a vehicle to kind of add humor to the stream, it, it does add a lot of elements and it does make you kind of like almost indestructible in a sense to, to insults. Cause it's mm. like, all right, well, mm. if you're gonna make an insult and I'm, I'm able to play it off and make it add to the content. Yeah. yeah. Well, then it's like, well, what what can you do really is yeah. if someone really wants to, for some reason, upset you. Mm. I don't know why they would. I know, I, it's, it's, a, it's a weird thing, but you know, you put yourself out there and it's it's just, uh, it's just part of the territory that does come with it is yeah, so. you get all the feedback, good mm. and bad. It can be very yeah. rewarding. Instantaneously. Instantaneous. Instantaneously. Yeah. And that's what Twitch does. And I think that that kind of field makes it so exciting for me. But yeah. uh, I, I did have, uh, can I ask one question really quick? Cause I, oh, sure. I, I, I sure. know that you guys do get this one criticism occasionally that sometimes on the anime podcast, there's no, we don't talk about anime, right? Yeah. Sometimes. Is that, is that a criticism? Is not that at all. I love it. <laughs> I, I've enjoyed it. But I, I just wanted to, I, I'm curious how, I know how anime started in America, but I want to know how you, what was your guys' like first exposure to anime? Cause I, you've, I'm sure you've told it before, yeah. but I just haven't heard it personally. And I want to see how that compares with like 1997, 98 and the, the horrors of what you would have had to go through by liking <laughs> anime when it started. 
I don't. I mean, like, I would say because I've I've heard stories about people who got into anime in like your era, where it's kind of like <laughs> your era, your it's like, era. It's like the Joel. I, I can, I can, like, fin- I can finally, I can finally say that because normally everyone, I, I look at like other content creators and I'm just like, you don't know the pain we went through. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was like it was part one out of three Espanol subtitle on YouTube. Yeah, on YouTube. It was on YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, yeah, people would yeah. like upload rips people of it. Would YouTube. upload because back then they had a ten minute, uh, like a ten minute limit. So the, they would upload parts of the anime into threes because it was obviously like 24 minutes. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can get a whole anime series just uploaded oh, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, unless, unless it was like you find part one, but you can't find yeah, part two, but yeah. there's part three. That would, part yeah. three. Yeah. 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 yeah, that would happen a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You'd have to just kind of be like, I just want to get through this anime. So I'm going to skip half of this episode and then yeah. it's a crucial detail. Yeah. That's so crazy. So, I mean, yeah. yeah, a lot of people my age, they got into anime through like Toonami and yeah, Adult yeah. Swim. That was like a like Dragon Ball Z, Gundam Wing, uh, Trigun, Cowboy yeah, Bebop. They were a huge order. push yeah. like in, in terms of like exposing people to anime. And then the internet era came on. Um, and that's when people started discovering shows like Naruto and Bleach mm. and One Piece. And that got a whole <laughs> load of other people into anime as well, uh. who discovered anime through the internet, basically. Mm. And but you man. paid the social price back when the day when you had to go to the video store or something like that, or Toonami. What, what do you mean? This, uh... The social price? Like, when there was liking like- Liking anime. Liking anime? Yeah. Like it oh was... no, I was a closer anime fan. Oh. Um, <laughs> Smart, he didn't tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah I see in America, like you mentioned, Toonami was the big one that started yeah. like 98, 99, 2000. Yeah. And I remember they showed some of Dragon Ball Z. Mm. And I remember my friends ordered tapes, like VHS. They paid like, we saved up all of our money. And I was like, I'm not going to contribute because I think this shit's too dorky still, but yeah. I, I, I want to support you guys. Uh, I'll pay like the postage. And they got like, they ordered it from Japan and it was like 28, 29 different VHS tapes yeah. or whatever. And the worst quality like you right. could not eat and there was no subtitles yeah we were just watching the cartoons and i was like you're watching I, the I, pixels fly yeah, around. i was like this is lame and i remember i was like nah i'm going i'm gonna pivot here i'm not doing the dragon ball thing i yeah. went to a family video we had in kansas city and they had like the anime section was kind of off by itself <laughs> as and it, was, it yeah. was and i was like no this looks cool and i mentioned on a video i did with you uh, Ninja Scroll was the first thing that I'd seen. That came out in like 93. Right. Ninja Scroll is fucking cool. It's fucking yeah. awesome. So I was like, wow, this is amazing. So then I got into like Record of Lotus War and Neon Genesis. Yeah. And I remember the dude was like, the guy working there was like, hey man, I know you've been like checking out a lot of the anime stuff. You get like two video games and like one anime. I got something to like blow your mind, dude. And I was like, let's fucking go. And he was like, all right, normally like someone your age can not actually go over there. So like, I'll just sneak it into like your bag, dude. And I was like, let's Let's go. And then, uh, I, now this was unfortunate because when I thought we were gonna watch something kind of like, I don't know, like Vampire Hunter D or whatever. Yeah, the fuck. yeah, yeah. Uh, and my mom was like, what are you watching? I like cartoons. And I was like, yeah, let's check it out. This shit was called like Shin Angel and it was like sh- hardcore hentai. And, and then my mom was I, like- I, <laughs> yeah, I, I am af- I'm, I'm ashamed <laughs> to say that I know Shin Angel Yo, actually. That, that shit started with like pornography. It like starts with some vivid dream he's having. Yeah. And then I was like, I think this is just the previews, mom. <laughs> I was like, this shit's was weird. Was your mom there the whole time? She was like, oh dear, this isn't Disney. And I was like, <laughs> no, I was like, this is just some weird, I don't know what they do over, you know, I don't know what's going on, but like the, the regular one, the guy promised me it's cool. And she was like, yeah. okay. And I was like, but you don't have to watch. You can leave now. <laughs> and then it starts with like a slice of life school thing. Yeah. You know? And then it's like this dude trying to like- Were there subtitles or no? There was. Oh, okay. And so I-, so I This could, one had subtitles. This one had subs. Well, yeah. this one was the VHS from the store. The ones we ordered were from a guy recording. Oh, right. Japan. So you were oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. international. We waited like two months during the summer mm, yeah. to get a box of tapes that yeah. also had like different Japanese programs and commercials. Right, and right. Yeah. But Shin Angel didn't have any of that. And I was like, and so we made it about <laughs> four minutes through that thing. And I hastily <laughs> I turned it off and I, she was like, I think he gave you the wrong one. And I was like, yes, he did. That guy is in big trouble. I, <laughs> I was like, you you go away and I'm gonna make sure this tape goes right back to him right n- n- tomorrow morning. And then I, I hid that tape in my couch for like two years. I was like, yeah. I'm never giving that back because I don't wanna, <laughs> I was like, one, it's kind of cool. But two, I don't wanna be the guy to be bringing back Shin Angel to like <laughs> family video. Yeah. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> So for me, that was the end of my my anime. I was like, that, that, that's, 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 that's I'm done. That's enough. I'm, that's done. enough. I'm, I'm going back to games. This was, is what we do. Was it like, so like how popular was anime like at, at it, your era? Did, it, 
Was it like looked down upon? Were people like bullied? Looked like down upon? <laughs> It was the single worst thing you could do to your social standing. Good, good. I just, wa I just wanted to confirm. D and D nerds were like, "Dude, that is too much." Like, you, 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 remind, you remind, you remind me of like a story that I, I, I had like in university. So we were having like a boys' night in university, um, and, and hey guys, we're not watching it. Okay, guys, we, 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 we're having we're having boys night. We're at, we're at the pub. We had a few drinks, and we had like you know, kind of like a boys' chat. And uh, the question got uh, someone posed the question: "What's th what's the most thing you've been ashamed about jacking off to?" <laughs> Everyone's like silent for a bit, and then one of my mates just goes. Oh, I jacked off to anime porn once and everyone went, oh, what? fuck, you actually did that? And here's me like silently sipping on a pint, <laughs> being like, I should, I'm, shaking. Not, I'm yeah. not gonna say anything, man. You, you I'm were, not gonna say anything. Yeah, you're like, like oh, today? You, you did that? Like, you, yeah. you, oh, that's that's disgusting, man. You, you did that? Well, the <laughs> line was blurred back then because yeah. uh, anime mm. and nudity went hand in hand, right? Mm. Cause there was some cool shit that I remember reading like Gunsmith Cat, do you guys know this? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like that was like a cool thing to read because, or you know, the stories were really interesting. Yeah. But it always towed the line of decency compared mm. to like what everyone else was into. True. And it wasn't really until you Japan became kind of cool again, like around Battle Royale, you know, when that started pushing things off in mm. video games. But like anime, not even until college was that shit allowed. Like you, yeah. if you liked anime, you're also complicit with liking hentai. Yeah. Well, and I mean, especially because like during like, like the like especially like around the time what you were getting into it, like around the well, ninja. Well, I never got into it. I want to make that clear. <laughs> yeah. that, I was no, it's, playing it's cool now. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool now. Still out. I'm out of it's here. It's, it's, it's a new generation. Yeah, it's cool now. It's, it's cool. Uh -uh. You're You're like, but like cool. talk about liking hentai. Okay? But you know, like around like the Ninja Scroll era, like the early '90s, like that was when like the '90s OVA boom was around, and that was during the time where the anime industry was like no holds barred, like nothing was off limits. So like you always had these shows that were just like, okay, yeah, it's just a simple story of kids going to school. That's a lot of tits. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and it's like, yeah. and there was no sign of that shit either. And it just came like out of nowhere. Well, right? it's it was totally rampant because there was some really cool anime, like even like Street Fighter 2 or the King of Fighters or Fatal Fury animes. Yeah. Like those are really cool. Like they yeah. were just these one shot kind of like two hour things, but you still have like Chun-Li taking a shower. And yeah. you're like, w that would never fly on like a Capcom <laughs> franchise yeah. today. They, you know, I was like, it's such a weird, like you had to either hide it or, or you know, be that guy who was like, yes, I like anime. And everyone's like, <laughs> Dork, and then you're just like, "That's cool, man." I, yeah, I, you, you were the nerd that the nerds would make fun of. Oh, yeah, yeah, you would be. Yeah. It's a tough one, but I, I do think it's neat because now I have seen it come full circle. Like now, yeah. it's like you don't like anime, you're a loser. Kids have it so yeah. fucking easy today, uh, man. But it's I can't get bullied for not liking. It's anime not now. fair, man. Like you don't like Demon Slayer, <laughs> okay? <laughs> or, or, it's, or, or it's like, or, or it's kind of like a thing where it's like you've only watched Naruto, you yeah. fucking normie. Like it's like, bro. <laughs> Well, there you have it. I guess I'm glad I dodged that particular bullet because I was in the, I was all in on gaming. That was all like, yeah. that was all I cared about and stuff. But yeah, that was, it was a death knell in social. And imagine talking to any kind of dating opportunity, 0%. Wait, have you heard of ninja school? Yeah. <laughs> you remind me of a ninja from the forest. <laughs> the way you stealthily move through math class. Um, I, I almost went further with that joke and then I stopped. <laughs> but like th that was the, it was, it was too much. It was just too much. But yeah, mm. I'm glad that I didn't know about the YouTube 10 minute every yeah, like you into, know, yeah. you could watch the whole thing, the whole series of whatever. If you were lucky. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just remember that I, I realized like up until I was a teenager, I mm. pretty much never watched a full series of anything because <laughs> it was always scattered on TV, right? You would never, you would never get to watch it in the parts or mm. in the order it was intended. And I kind of had this revelation when I was like, oh my God, this is so much better when I can watch it in order and all of it. <laughs> This is amazing. I, yeah. I kind of like went on this like insane watching spree where I didn't play any video games, even though I was addicted to video games. I would just spend all day watching like box series I was online. Cause I was just like, oh my God, you can watch things in order. Wow, and for that's, free that's kind of a cool, I mean, yeah. I'm glad that that happened. Yeah. Cause like my parents, the only DVDs they would ever buy was uh, of movies and stuff. So I only ever got to watch movies in completion. TV shows mm. I often never got to see where they went ever. All right. No. Yeah, same here, because when, you know, in the era of TV, mm. um, like we 
couldn't re- I, c- I couldn't really uh, afford DVDs. Or yeah, anything DVDs like are that. way too like, expensive. Especially box sets. TV Holy ones. Fuck, yeah, man. TV ones were like uh, t- ten pound for like two episodes. Yeah, I mean they're still like, fucking expensive. To oh, this Japan is a joke. Yeah, yeah. Anime, yeah. Is, anime is absurd. Yeah, so expensive. you watch what you got on TV, and that yeah. didn't necessarily mean if you missed the week, then you just had to like deal with the fact that you missed the week, you know. And I think that's why you know back when I was growing up, that's, I think that's why Pokemon was so popular because has a storyline, but yeah. you can jump in most episodes. Yeah. And that's why there's so much filler back then. Cause you know, you, yeah. you probably missed 10 episodes. And yeah, you know, yeah. I there. fear that for me though, that ship has sailed. I, I feel I, <laughs> I've tried to get into it because I know that you guys are, you, you, you've talked about it a lot. And I know that a lot of the people who I interact with now who like yeah. Japan, are interested in it. My yeah. fuck. Shin Angel like well, tore, that, traumatized that you, man. So uh, <laughs> One VHS, like, I'm out for my phone. Like, like, so whatever gone, whatever happened to it, the copy? I actually think that somewhere in Missouri, if you lift up a certain panel on the ceiling, you'll find the actual porn VHS that my friend spliced together from like Cinemax or yeah. whatever. And he distributed it out to all the buddies back when we were 13 or something. And that Shin Angel VHS. <laughs> Wait, what are your friends just spliced a porn video and you distributed don't, it? You don't know the struggle at all. <laughs> I remember back in the day, you would, he, yeah, so Cinemax or Skinemax is what we called it, or HBO, none of us had subscriptions to this because it was expensive. But if you did, they would, there, there was like, he would make it look nice. It'd, like the video would start <laughs> and it would be like Orion Films, which had nothing to do with like the porn stuff, but yeah. he'd use like, he'd record that part from like a movie. And then he'd be like, oh, what are we getting today? This is gonna be exciting. And then that was the only porn you had for a year. That was it. <laughs> or if you, I remember when I was a kid and I got a computer, I got like, you know, this this thing and it had a printer and I, I, I was like, oh man, I can get like a picture of like Carmen Electra naked or something. And I was like, print. And then it would be like, <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, oh, in three hours, this shit's gonna be amazing. <laughs> I was like, Let's, and then it would get like, it'd be like the sun, you know, and you see like a blue sky and then it'd keep going and you're like, ooh, it's getting there. And then it'd be like Elmo from Sesame Street. And you're like, what the fuck? I didn't, that's not what I downloaded. And then it's like, not what you got. Yeah. And now you've used like 22% of your ink from the, uh, and those, yeah. that was really expensive. Mm, your mom's so, gonna kill you. Well, yeah. you know, I, boys will be boys. <laughs> um, but like, and then we had the whole era of, of Kazaa and LimeWire, yeah. which yeah. is, um, That's you, how I found Shin Angel, actually. Well, well, you could have just asked me for my. I remember trying to like download like a episode of something, and I was like, "This is a, this." <laughs> was this it called Shin Angel? This, you is, were a, like, yeah. this is a Naruto. <laughs> yeah, it, was, like, it was. It was. It was always Shin Angel or Bible Black. That was. That yeah. was the only two choices. Like, it was like specifically oh. Shin Angel episode two, oh. and it was only episode two that was available on LimeWire. I have no yeah. idea why. I, was that the one with the girl who was jumping off the roof? Is yeah, that, yeah. Oh, that's the one I watched. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one, yo, that's, that's it. That's when you started describing it, I was like, this uh, is this bringing is back a core cool memory. That I've completely I, forgotten. I, I, was, I, was never, I was never old enough or intelligent enough to figure out how to use the computer at, at the period when LimeWire was around. My brother you, was, right, my brother yeah. was. Yeah. And I remember my brother getting absolutely murdered by my parents because he downloaded in just the most, the, so many viruses. Oh, oh yeah. To the, PC, to the point where it was, it was basically unusable. Yeah. And I just remember just my dad just screaming at my brother and me being like, what's going on? Why is why is Hillary Clinton, uh, <laughs> why is Bill Clinton talking? Yeah, it's they, Bill Clinton. Bill, that, sorry, Bill Clinton. Yeah. It's, it, it, every time you'd get, you'd, you'd search for something oddly specific, for example, big boobied woman threesome. Yeah. <laughs> Random one, yeah. and then you'd get you'd wait like two days, yeah, because <laughs> it has to be seated yeah, from other seated. people, yeah. 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 And then you'd hit play, and it'd show Bill Clinton go, "I did not have sexual <laughs> relations with that woman." That yeah. must that and is legit the, the best troll it is the of Rick internet Roll. history that before was, Rick Roll, yeah. Rick Roll before Rick Roll. Yeah, right. so you'd be like, whoever Damn. whoever was the first guy who came up with that, literally the best troll in internet oh, history. What a what a <laughs> what a legend! It was awful, and so you. And then I remember reformatting your PC was a regular. Thing, you'd have a friend who knows how to do it. Yeah, yeah. And we'd be like, I heard Windows 98 version two is way better than Windows XP. And we'd be like, let's fucking do that then. Let's get a cracked version of this and then we'll do that. And it was like, that's why when you say I didn't grow up with the internet era, I, I feel like I, you know, the, that was the beginning of the yeah. internet. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, I, think uh, was, I think what separates that in my mind, because when I was growing up, it was sort of like this, where it was like, there was this, there was this moment when you were done with the computer and you logged off. Oh yeah. And then it was, that was it. Yeah. yeah. Out. Whereas now it's like, you are always online. Yeah. yeah. And so in my mind, that's where like the notable switch is, is like when it was more accessible in your phone and every app was on there and mm. you know, 
now it suddenly became where you used to have to log on to MSN or log mm-hmm. on to these chat rooms to try and chat. Now it's like, oh, you can reach me anytime. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's where I felt like the internet became what it is today. Yeah. And before that was kind of the wild west where it was like, yeah. Hey, if you well, were online, we chatted. If you if you weren't, whatever. You, yeah, you like know. AOL Instant Messenger was right. the big yeah. one. And it even had like the door opening sound when you'd have a list of all the contacts, like you said. Yeah. And it'd be like- you'd, You would just message them. Well, right? you'd, they usually had an away message up or it would be like, they wouldn't be on the online list. So what you hear that, and then you would, you'd be like, oh, who was that that just logged in? Right. Oh, cool. And then you'd talk to them for two or three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah I But then they'd thing. be like, I gotta go. And be like, and you're like, well, okay. And you could- <laughs> customize the sounds and yeah, man, that was some, that was some fun stuff. But I think that we're in a nice place now where now there's a, a platform for everybody to do what any, anything and everything that they've ever mm, wanted. So mm, that's yep. pretty cool. Good or bad. That's yeah. good or bad. Yeah. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's a, we, there's a good points and there's bad points to be connected all the time. Mm. You know, I mean, I, I feel like now there was a big separation between what you did online and what you did outside of the internet. And now mm. that, sep- that, that wall is just getting like thinner and thinner every mm. year. Dude, Serial Experiments Lane said that shit like 20 years ago and they, they were, were right. Fucking, they were fucking right. They were man. fucking what right. Say? What yeah. can I say? But I did bring uh, one small thing just so, and you, we're going to put it at the very bottom of all this mess. It's not a Shin Angel toy, I swear. <laughs> oh, but, oh, God damn it. Uh, I, I couldn't get it. This is, this is my hat I'll wear in a second, I guess. But I feel like the real anime that never gets <laughs> talked about is, is my guys from Ninja Turtles. So, <laughs> I'm going to leave that down near the bottom so that there's some American <laughs> representation. Thank you. Um, we, have, we, have, we have LeBron James over yeah, there. LeBron James. Well, LeBron James. Uh, another, another representation. Of, yeah, look, we have LeBron uh, right there. LeBron James. All right, get that back to me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put that near the bottom, near that banana. Oh, look, if he, he can kick. He can kick. He can kick LeBron <laughs> out of here. Oh, that's so cool. Cool. <laughs> But yeah, that's then. That's a cool toy. We also have Mike Wazowski. I saw yeah, that, but I was like, that's that's Pixar, it's not anime, or it's not animation, cartoons are different. You know, okay, like those, so there you go. Put them there. So I felt like you need something, because I don't understand any of what's happening here. <laughs> And honestly, this is giving me severe. Well, you know, would, you, you know, would you like to know? Would what you does, like to know? What does this invoke? In, ah, uh, besides the thing I watched with my mother, this <laughs> looks like. See, this looks like some Naruto shit. I don't know that. She, <laughs> she looks like the hidden ninjas. Like, welcome to the inn, and I'll serve you up a pork oh, dinner tonight or whatever. Oh, you is. poor naive oh. child. And then you've got the the one in the middle with the spear. Yeah, that's yeah. like some hardcore, you know, that's, that's a sword, demon that's a sword, slayer actually. shit. That's a yeah. sword. Oh, it's a katana. Yes, that's it like is. a the nodachi. It's like yeah. the big one. Yeah, man. Let yeah. me tell you about fate, Pete. Oh, Just, that's uh, fate. That's where they have a uh, no, uh, a god. Fate, right? It's not fate. Uh, you, you'd be surprised that first uh, one is this, also this fate. is this is fate. Oh god. Wait, this is fate. This is fate. Yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah. yeah, that other one is also fate. But yeah, you just picked up picked up two oh. fake. Yeah. Wait, well, um. so wait, fate, uh, Grand Order of the Marshals or whatever. It's like, <laughs> I, I know this shit. It's like fate. You, you could have stopped at Grand Order. <laughs> yeah. okay. you, you, right. you, were, you were halfway there. Like, what's, the, what's the full name again? Fate Grand, Grand Order, Order XR Two. This time it's serious, but like. I know because it's a regular person and yeah. then they'll have like Athena or some historical person yeah. like yes. Abraham Lincoln or some shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then Wait. they're like a cute anime girl, right? Yeah, they would- I didn't they, know that. They would turn up. them uh, like historical. Yeah, like King Arthur is like a like see? a hot chick. Oh, wait. You, you, see, you see that character over there? This one. That's King Arthur. That's King Arthur. Like, I thought that was, I thought that uh, she's not the girl who knows King Arthur. No, no, no she, she, is she is King, King Arthur. Arthur. She is King Arthur. Yeah. yeah. Is this <laughs> like- Can I speak to your manager? Can I speak to the, first, the man of the house? <laughs> is this like Genghis Khan or something? Or? That's Goku. Okay, that's Goku, all right. Well, so, uh, you know, I, I'm not familiar with all of it, but like, mm. and the yeah. one I do like, because I, I do have a, a dark history with Hulk Tono Ken and Pachinko. Uh, yeah, oh, dude, yeah, Hulk yeah. Tono Ken is fucking That's the best Pachinko? That's the best one. Uh, dude, I love Pachinko. I am Wait, all really? in. Really? I, I I've won it. so much money playing Pachinko, <laughs> it's no. not even funny. When I first came to visit- Did you learn from the guy who did the- No, I, I was better. It was the, the host family. I came on right. New Year's and the dad, or it was her uncle, he said like, here's some, uh, the New Year's Otoshi, Otoshidama? Or not yeah, so, yeah, the, the New get, Year's money, right? The New yeah. Year's yeah. money. I was like, I'm 22. And he's like, it's cool, man, because yeah. you're, it's usually for kids. Yeah, right. And uh, he took me to Pachinko and <laughs> I was playing some Kurohige pompon pirate shit. And it's like the shirts. Yeah. And I won like $800. Jeez, like, and, and I, wow. And I felt so bad because I kept winning 
and they kept losing money, but they couldn't leave because my chain bonus was out of control. <laughs> so they're just sitting there next to me. They're like, have you lost yet? And I'm like, no, man, it keeps saying Dokkan. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and what, what does Dokkan mean? It, it's like exploding. It's like exploding. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, and so I won all this money and I was, I was able to get a, a, a PlayStation 3 that was like the white version that oh, just yeah, yeah. come out. Oh, because okay. you can you trade your balls mm -hmm. for an item yeah. or for like, pieces of plastic that somehow someone next door really wants to buy. Right. And then you, you, you'll you be like, I'll trade you this piece of plastic for like $200. He's like, okay. Yeah. And because it's, it's illegal to gamble. Yeah, the uh, loophole yeah. is crazy. Man. So I was able to buy everyone like dinner. Yeah. And I was like, when I come back to Japan, I'm playing pachinko again. And I started playing Hokuto no Ken. And I had no fucking clue who was who good or sure bad. Was, yeah. I thought Raul or whatever, yeah. I thought he was like the best dude ever because he was so strong. <laughs> he is the like, best dude ever. He yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. And I hated that Joggy guy, but I yep. love seeing him because he's the easiest to win off of. <laughs> and like, I knew of Joggy, I knew every single element of these games. And I, I've played every Hokuto no Kin machine that's ever come out. Yeah, right. And uh, Kyujin no Hoshi, it's a baseball manga from like, the Edo period, yeah. I can't say it right. But uh, those two games, I still yearly go on my pilgrimage with like 200 bucks and I either break even or I rake in some cash. And wait, I also, wait, so have you actually watched or read Hawk Uh I know the Fruit story. Fruit Pachinko, <laughs> he knows. I, he I, knows. I know the songs. I know <laughs> Idol. You know You Are Shock. You know yeah. You Are Shock. Uh, uh, welcome to this crazy- Oh my I know God, all, yeah. I know all that shit. And I know, uh, yeah. of course. and I used to make mistakes because when Ken would show up on the screen, <laughs> if he was doing something, he'd go like, Jamada. Yeah. I didn't know what that meant, but it sounded cold blooded. Yeah. So I'd say that's like teachers in my way. <laughs> <laughs> and that means like, get the fuck out of my yeah, way. Get, get the, the fuck way. out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and they would be like, is he must say? And I'd be like, doke. <laughs> Which is like, remove yourself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then sometimes, uh, this, uh, I remember I was like teaching- This is why you shouldn't learn Japanese from anime. Yeah. Th this was the worst example though, because I was teaching at the first school. Yeah, I was yeah. teaching these elementary school kids. Oh man, it's so bad. <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> no. And these kids were like seven or eight and right. we were playing dodgeball. And I had to be on like the loser kid team. And I was like, I'm not going to lose to a bunch of, and this one kid kept talking shit from across the <laughs> arena. Right. And I was like, okay, okay, okay. All right. And every time he threw it, I would like, you know, catch the ball and I'd be like, you're out. And then he was like, Baka. And I was like, now, wait a minute. I'm a teacher, son. You know, I was yeah. like, <laughs> so I, uh, I felt really bad. I didn't throw it hard that hard, but I threw it. And I, uh, he ducked and I hit another kid in the face who was not looking. Right. And I remember like we kept playing and then I finally got the kid out and I was like, quiero. Which is like, <laughs> it's like, which disappear. Dis like, not just disappear. It's like, I, you will never be reincarnated. It's like your body is gone forever. Yeah. And I remember I was, and then the kid was like, he thought that was really funny. So he, you know, I thought we connected. Yeah. And I felt bad for the kid. I, I bought him like an ice cream or something. I was yeah. like, oh, sorry kid, he was fine. But then the, the gym teacher came back and he, he looked very flustered and he wrote on like a little post-it note. He must've been like scribbling, looking it up. Yeah. He was like, these are children, please don't throw hard. I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I was like, he was calling me Baka. What are yeah. you gonna do about that shit? I was like, he's like, but you got him, man. I fucking got him. All Kieto, all these, you know. But like, That's I a sick throw, though, right? That was my second week in Japan. And so <laughs> I'd already been going through some phases where kids, like the concho phase was very popular where they, where they do this thing to teachers. Yeah, yeah. That was really popular in the countryside. So. Like I said, you had may, to make our own fun out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You may think you're teaching, but overall you're more of an ambassador and a, you're, you're almost like a student with the kids in a lot of the times. Mm, right. You play the same games, you, you eat the same lunches and you hear the same jokes. And obviously I learned very quickly don't use Hokuto no Ken phrases. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been absolutely legendary yeah. if you had like caught the ball and you'd be like, oh my, one more scene Yeah, I'm so glad I didn't say that. I'm so glad. I think Kiedo is pretty bad though. Oh, and luckily gonna, the kid took that. it yeah. as a joke. Yeah. So use that as well. You got to use Kiedo. Yeah. Kiedo. Kiedo. <laughs> Kiedo. I think I actually learned that from like an RPG game because I always, I'm a, I'm a subtitle dub, I'm not dub guy, right? I like yeah, yeah. Sub, sub guy. Yeah, sub guy. Sub guy. But yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it was pretty enlightening and I must say, the other nine and a half, 10 years, I, I was a very good person. I didn't take it out throwing dodgeballs at kids, but yeah, <laughs> the other nine or 10 years. You didn't, you didn't years. eviscerate any yeah, children. Yeah. Hey children. man, I, you can only take so much physical abuse before you're like, look, okay, yeah, all right, we're all playing. Yeah. All right, but I, I get to play too. You know, you're, you're pretty big. 
So you were stronger than me. All right. So, but yeah, it was it was a good experience. And I, it's kind of funny the the kid who I said that to, and uh, some of those some of those that that class yeah. wrote me a letter like three years ago saying that they had finished like junior high school or something. Yeah. And that oh. they missed, they missed. Uh, Peterson say or whatever. Oh, so that's that so cute. A lot. That yeah. one class. Of like, <laughs> that, well, that, that one that, that class. School, that school. Yeah. Okay, Do you exactly. remember that one teacher that said Kittle? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Sorry, <laughs> but, well, better maybe, that maybe than the Russian other guys who got Dex, kicked out. Dex for, a kid and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> told but, the other one to like go. Good kids. Good kids. Good experiences. <laughs> but yeah, that's. Hokuto no Ken, I do know Kinshido. So like, yeah. hey, wait, is that the the butler guy pouring drinks? Is that yeah. you? Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> not me, but that was- That's you. I mean, that I mean a lot of girls believed it for a while. Oh, yeah, this is a character I did a lot of impersonations of on YouTube. Yeah. And is that Snow White on the other side? That's uh, uh, that's, that's uh, One Piece. That's One Piece. Yeah, that one is piece. One Piece. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's not the angle. One Piece. It's yeah. a character from One no, Piece. No, I know, I know. Yeah. This was Snow White. From the <laughs> angle I saw it, it looked vaguely okay, familiar. Well, that's Nico Robin. That's Nico Robin, yeah. <laughs> She's a navigator or something, right? Okay. She's oh, an ar archaeologist. Oh, yeah. She's an archaeologist. Oh, yeah. A bunch yeah. of nerds. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, yeah. she's the archaeologist. Okay. You've seen Akira, right? I assume. Yeah, well, you've seen like Ava. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck is that? <laughs> was that the, the, jock, the Boxer Joe guy? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's gone from Hunter Hunter. Oh dear. Yeah. This is just a mess. Um yeah, this is a bit illicit, I think. We can't show that, I think, direct close-ups. Um I know this because it's a video game, so Nier's cool. Yeah. yeah. Nier is cool. And I, I feel like anime it, here's the thing I'll say and why I I, I grew up reading comic books, right? Yeah. You know, comic books are cool and they have some awesome stories. Yeah. But the reading Slam Dunk when I was in Niigata for like cause uh I had nothing to do. Mm. Yeah. I was like crying at the end of that story. Oh, it was, oh yeah. it's the it only is legendary manga I've One ever really read. One of the best sports anime of all Oh, absolutely. So good. And I think what I really respect about manga and anime is they're not afraid to take risks with their characters that American mm. comics are. Like they'll kill people. They will do tragic stories. And most importantly, their stories, except for One Piece, end. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they, but hey, like one, hey, One Piece is right, ending. Yeah, we're so, we're yeah, in yeah, this yeah, final yeah, yeah, But like yeah. the fact that you have <laughs> these cool stories it's mm. not like spider-man's back for issue 1267 yeah and so right. are all the characters who've died and been around i like that they have these single there's moments consequences. Yeah, there's yeah, consequences yeah. i love yeah. how you i love how you say that they end when you read the one manga but you know it that's actually ended. <laughs> well he wrote vagabond too right yeah, that yeah, hasn't that's, ended that's not ended he also oh. wrote real as well which is the wheelchair basketball that hasn't ended yeah. either well, all right, I take all of it back. Hey, man, <laughs> hey, man manga is shit, man. No, He's only like, finished slam dunk. <laughs> well, I think there are other stories. Like I bet Fate Grand Designs or whatever ended, right? <laughs> it's done. Uh, One no. arc. Uh, is King Arthur still slam fools? Yeah, uh, well, it depends. there's like 15 versions of there's King Arthur. There's 15 versions yeah. of King Arthur. It's now. A we're, not, we're not gonna get into that. Yeah. Otherwise that's that's a rabbit hole for you now. I'm fine, and I, it's yeah. wasted on me. Uh, <laughs> I don't wanna hear the voices of, of King Arthur, but like, yeah. <laughs> I've already done and that. We have a lot of voices if you start playing Fate. Yeah. yeah. Well, Too it many. Is, it is way, way more than you heard when you were doing your voice acting. Hey, you have no idea what gods I was listening to. <laughs> no, you're right. It was, uh, Santa. you're right, you're right. Santa, 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 Santa Claus. Claus. People. <laughs> Santa and Fate? Uh, yeah. See, I mean, that's wait, cool. Ka kinda. Kinda. What the fuck? Kinda. It's Santa and Fate. He's kinda. See, I'm reading Fate. Depends, depends on like, it depends what on which <laughs> version of yeah. Which version, so, yeah. Uh, you know. Well, oh I, I think it's it's something maybe I'll leave to the experts then yeah. and I'll stick with yeah. my teaching and stuff. Well, uh, you know, I, we'd, we'd love to keep chatting with you, Peter, but like you, you just have like a wealth of stories. Like this yeah. is like, for, for those this of you is... who are like tuning into Peter for the first time, this is like a, a tiny fucking <laughs> corner of the stories that Peter this has. This is like, like a drop in the bucket. Oh, dude, totally. And uh, if you want to hear more stories, check out his streams. Yeah, check out, yeah. Where can they find you, Pete? No, you know, I, it, it doesn't matter. I just want to say thank you. No, 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 no. Twitch.tv slash Prem. Me too. Go uh, check him out. Thanks. Yeah. But I just want to say it was really awesome being a part of this and sharing these these stories with you guys. And like, uh, it was very humbling. Thank you. It was, I had <laughs> yeah, to relive man. some of the most insane experiences of my life again. And uh, <laughs> I hope that's that chapter is close. Thank you guys so much for letting me be here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And again, guys, please. Your stories, yeah, and again, guys, please go check out Pierce. I know he's not going to do it, but we'll do a forum. Links, in the, Links in, the in the description. Check him out. He's fucking awesome. But uh, hey, look at all these patrons though. You see all these patrons on the screen? Yeah. Wow. Like everywhere. Look at them. Who's your favorite? Not that one. The one right down there, right after. Who do you right think after? has seen Shin Angel? 
Which oh, one? Yeah. Which one of these I've seen? Yeah. Which one hasn't seen Shin Angel? I feel like probably most all of them. Of the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know the Patreons. Of this. I've seen this community. I, I know, but no, that is that is pretty epic, and maybe I should join as well. This Patreon community, not a Shin Angel veteran. I have wisdom to provide. So, well, I'll tell you exactly where you can do it: patreoncom trash taste. Also, follow us on Twitter. Send us some memes on the subreddit, and if you head our face, listen to us on Spotify. But uh, yeah, thank you, Pete, for coming. Let's go. That was thank fun. Thank you. Yeah, 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 thank you. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. You're welcome back. Anytime. Time, man. Thank you so much. Finally. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you see next you week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>